plans to provide lethal aid to Ukraine's military, though the alliance did publicly agree to some funding for them. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The AP reports, North Korea's Supreme Court on Sunday sentenced a 24-year-old American man to six years of hard labor for entering the country illegally to commit espionage. At a trial that lasted about 90 minutes, the court said Matthew Miller tore up his tourist visa at Pyongyang's airport upon arrival on April 10th and admitting to having the wild ambition of experiencing prison life so that he could secretly investigate North Korea's human rights situation. Miller, who looked thin and pale at trial and was dressed completely in black is one of three Americans now being held in North Korea. Showing no emotion throughout the proceedings, Miller waived his rights to a lawyer and was handcuffed before being led from the courtroom after his sentencing. The court, comprising a chief judge flanked by two people's assessors, ruled it would not hear any appeals to its decision. Earlier, it had been believed that Miller had sought asylum when he entered North Korea. During the trial, however, the prosecution argued that was a ruse and that Miller also falsely claimed to have secret information about the U.S. military in South Korea on his iPad and iPod. Miller was charged under Article 64 of the North Korean Criminal Code, which is for espionage and can carry a sentence of 5 to 10 years, though harsher punishments can be given for more serious cases. During a brief interview with the Associated Press in Pyongyang last week, Miller said he had written a letter to President Barack Barack Obama, but had not received a reply. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, less than 24 hours after Prime Minister Haider Abadi ordered the military to halt airstrikes against civilian areas, the Iraqi military fired multiple missiles at a hospital in Fallujah, badly injuring a staff member and causing damage to the building. Fallujah was the first major city ISIS took all the way back in January, and the city's hospital has repeatedly been targeted by the Iraqi military, causing civilian casualties. Abadi's ban on such targeting was meant to meet a demand of Sunni tribal leaders in the region who have offered to back Iraq in retaking the areas from ISIS, and the latest attacks probably throw serious doubt into that. It also adds to unwelcome attention. It's The Onion Radio News. God loses his decision-making coin. This is Doyle Redland reporting. The Lord God has confirmed that he has misplaced his special decision-making coin. The coin, a relatively unremarkable 1972 nickel, has been used almost daily by the Supreme Being for over four billion years for the purpose of determining everything from the direction of the wind to the outcome of history. The visibly distraught God added, I have no idea where I put it. I remember flipping it last night for a couple in Monroe, Michigan, who were trying to conceive a child, but I haven't seen it since. God also said he hopes to locate the coin before 7.15 Thursday morning when United Flight 251 takes off from Seattle with actress Dixie Carter on board. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls toll-free, 855-450-FREE is the number. That number brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, it's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. All the features on the site we give away. 
Those other talk show hosts, the big ones in the business at least, they want to charge you for their websites. We give you more for free than they will charge you for, I bet. Uh, not that I've gone and actually paid for their subscriptions to know for sure, but I bet you it's true. Prove me wrong. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here. And, uh, yeah, you can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So, lots, of course, in the news and uh, stuff to talk about. But there was actually a news story, or not, not really a news story, more of an opinion piece that I had in the show prep for Saturday night, and we never got around to it, as is so often the case here on Free Talk Live. It's about the so-called social contract. Hmm. The article is from caseyresearch.com. And the headline is, the social contract is a fraud. Anyone trying to enforce it is acting criminally. Okay. By Paul Rosenberg. He says, when you hear the word social, it's even money that you're being snookered. (laughs) Social justice, for example, is primarily a ruse for penalizing individuals without any finding of fact as to their individual guilt. Whether you actually did anything deserving a penalty is irrelevant. It's social. And if you question the deal, you're a bad person. Well, I would like to say on social justice, um, I trotted, I've trotted this out in a few Quaker forums on, uh, on Facebook that essentially social justice is just, an, just a code word for stealing money from people. Now, the Quakers are into social justice, right? They tend to be, yeah. But they're also supposedly not into having one man above another. Apparently, there is some form of social justice in the minds of some people out there, that doesn't have to do with government intervention in any way. So whatever that is, I'm for it. Okay. Because it's voluntary and peaceful. But they've never been able to to explain it to you because you don't know what it is. They've they've explained it to me. Like, whatever their concepts are is fine. Like, consider that social justice is whatever, you know, some sort of equality that they see or whatever. You know, rich people giving their money voluntarily to help poor people or Mm -hmm. something. Um, And... That social justice, when instituted by the government, is rich people being having their money taken from them by force and given to uh, poor people. Like mm-hmm. there's a difference in some people's minds when it comes to social justice. And the author here says not every time. He just says most times. Right? Uh, he says it is primarily a ruse. There you mm-hmm. go. So going on, he says the granddaddy of all the social scams, however, is the social contract. That's what replaced the divine right of kings in the 17th and 18th centuries when it was falling apart. This is, in Wikipedia's slightly edited words, quote, a theory or model that addresses the questions of the origin of society and the legitimacy of the authority of the state over the individual, unquote. In other words, this was the new explanation of why it's right for one group of men to rule over other men. Wikipedia continues, quote, Arguments typically posit that individuals have consented either explicitly or tacitly to surrender some of their freedoms and submit to the authority of the ruler in exchange for protection of their remaining rights, unquote. And of course, as we know, just to um, interject here, as we know, there is no deal. You know, there, the protection isn't there, first of all. If they protect you, it's only because it'll make them look good to protect you. If they don't protect you, there's no obligation to, to do so. And because there's no obligation for them to protect, there can be no obligation for you to be uh, obliged to them. Yeah, I think it's really important to flesh that out a little bit. The Supreme Court has ruled, and I think in uh, most recently in a case where two women were being uh, raped over the course of something like 48 hours. Oh, that's an old case. Yeah, but that's They've most recent. since then. Since then? Okay, great. They rule there, this all the time. There is an instance uh, where uh, two women were being ro- raped over the course of uh, 48 hours. Warren they, versus District of Columbia. They called the police on multiple occasions, and the police kind of drove by and looked and didn't see nothing and left. Um, eh, it must not be serious this third time they've called. Um, you know, and the same thing kept happening, and... The Supreme Court ruled that no, no, they don't have an obligation to protect you, and if they did, um, you know, you'd they they would they'd be forced to make good, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you hire an insurance company to protect your stuff, you know, you pay a certain premium, and if it gets stolen or damaged or whatever, they there's write an actual you a check. contract there too yeah. when you have an insurance company. You Absolutely, can read the terms. You can read the terms. They have to pay you back. The police, they fail to protect you. 
nothing happens because they have no obligation to protect. Yeah, but do you think that they know that they have no obligation to protect you? I think most police are operating under the assumption that it's their job to protect you, aren't they? I think they may think it's their job and that they may have to perform at a certain level. But we have heard, uh, you know, we heard somebody call in that was talking, I think he was a rookie cop or he was telling the, the story of a friend who was a rookie cop or something like that. And uh, he's like... You know, knife fight at 34th and, uh, and, and 5544 34th Street. And, you know, he's like, get ready to get to go. He's sitting in the uh, the partner's car. He's like, come on, come on, come on. And the partner's like, whoa, what? hold there, hold on there, buddy. <laughs> you got somebody, a family member there? And he said, no. Well, we're just going to wait a little while here. You don't want to get in the middle of it. <laughs> and essentially, wow. now that's the story he told. I'm not uh-huh. claiming. It's a good story. I'm not claiming that story is true or false in that instance. I will, however, claim there are police officers that act that way simply because statistically there must be police officers that act that way. Mm. And yeah. It's if also somebody, self-interested. I right, mean. If somebody's incentivized to act in a certain fashion, which is to say, you know, it's not like the courts are going to go after you for it. Yeah. And obviously if you're a police officer, you never show up when they call you. <laughs> that's not going to work out. But if you're like, eh, what can I tell you? We had some traffic. Yeah. What can they say? So a group of rulers gets to ignore our rights, take away our money continually, punish us when it wishes, and even send us off to war. And that's all okay, because we somehow agreed to the deal. It's a contract, after all. Except it's not. If an adult wants to sign away his rights and make himself a serf to politicians, that's his choice, and I won't take it from him. But for the deal to be legit, a clear agreement and authorizations on both sides are required. A contract, again, from Wikipedia, is the following. Quote, an agreement having a lawful object entered into voluntarily by two or more parties, each of whom intends to create one or more legal obligations between them. The elements of a contract are offer and acceptance by competent persons having legal capacity who exchange consideration to create mutually uh, mutuality of obligation. A social co- unquote. A social contract fails this standard in multiple ways. In fact, it's not a contract in any rational sense of the term. And if it's not a contract, then the use of that word is fraudulent. Now, fraud is uh, the false representation with the intent of persuading a victim to part with property. And that is precisely what's being done with the social contract, and on a gigantic scale. We have a supposed contract, and we have trillions of dollars changing hands based upon its legitimacy. If, in fact, it is not a contract, then the entirety of the arrangement is a massive criminal fraud. So, is this the, or is this social contract legitimate? Let's examine some crucial aspects of contracts. One, competence. In order to agree to a contract, one must be competent. You cannot, for example, make a contract with a hungry five-year-old, trading a few candy bars for a third of the child's lifetime earnings. <laughs> <laughs> the child is not competent, and any such agreement is rightly considered invalid. The social contract, however, is held to be binding upon us from birth. Well, how is that possible? Can an infant do what a five-year-old or a 12-year-old cannot? Hmm. Verdict, the social contract fails on this point. Voluntary agreement. A contract must be agreed to. I was never given a choice to sign or reject such an agreement, and I doubt you were either. There can be no contract at all without a voluntary agreement. Now, don't they say, wouldn't, so, like, the suggestion is that if you decide to be in a certain place, Mm -hmm. that you have a certain set of obligations. For instance, you walk into a restaurant, you sit down, you eat, and... You have an obligation to pay, even though it's not explicitly stated, that's right? Yeah. You don't get an instruction book. And so, I mean, that's societal, mm-hmm. not really... Uh, Cultural. It's, it's, it's social, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you yeah. know, you might even be able to make the argument in court that, hey, look... You know, I did, didn't know what was going on here. I, I, <laughs> Everyone I, was just being very nice. <laughs> I, I just sat down. They gave me stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I sat down. I got some water. They asked me if I'd like anything else. I said, do you have a grilled cheese sandwich? They said yes. They brought it to me. I didn't look at the menu. I didn't even see there was prices next to it. Mm-hmm. What do you want from me? <laughs> So we'll continue here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Well, how's that different from the social contract then, what you're describing? That's my question, yeah. is, is how is it different? Let's talk about that coming up here in moments. We'll also go through a few more points about the social contract. Your thoughts are welcome. 
Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at angioprim.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. It's happening every day. They sip some kind of chemicals through the floor. Oh, so it's like gas. It sounds crazy, but oh. it's the truth. I was under the impression they were coming into your house and like and holding you down. You. Well, they can come in. Oh, yeah, I got Have... the remote controls right now. I can't find them. I listen to this preacher man. Every time I listen to him, they some kind of way they turns the station <laughs> off. Maybe it's just going off. I mean, you'd you be surprised. They've got like the remote, Mark. How much power they have, and that's what they got. They got a lot of power. I think you I, should go get some I help. I think you should think talk that, to somebody who cares about yeah. you and ask them about psychological help. Somewhere, someone has had gas pumped into their room, <laughs> but I just don't think it's happening with Mary because she's outspoken. <laughs> what does she speak out against? I should have asked her that. <laughs> I don't Damn know. it. You're, you're done. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at L. LRN.FM. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you would like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. Join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you on the site. Get interactive by submitting content right there to the front page of the website. You can vote on other submissions that other listeners have made, and they get to vote on yours as well. And ultimately, we can look at that. Uh, we, the hosts, and you, the listener, can look at it and decide well what's it, what's worth talking about. It's all been selected by listeners like you at freetalklive.com. 
and you need to know about ExpressCoin.com. If you've been thinking about getting Bitcoin and you're ready to finally jump in, go to ExpressCoin.com. Bitcoin, of course, is an amazing decentralized currency that is becoming more and more accepted around the world as time goes on by companies as large as Dell Computers and as small as Corner News right here on Main Street in Keene, New Hampshire. Derek J. does almost all of his daily business in Bitcoin. I think it's 100% of it, actually. Yeah, there are some things that I just can't do. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, you know, like uh, car insurance, for example. That's right. that's uh, one hurdle. But uh, for the most part, for the most part, everything is Bitcoin. I yeah. am so inspired by that. I mean, it's it awesome. takes it takes some dedication because in some cases it's probably a little harder to do the transaction. Yeah, it's um sometimes it hurts too. Like thinking, oh, I'm. Lo- I'm you know, I'm getting rid of this Bitcoin for that for that uh, temporary good. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes that's uh, that's the case. But if for the most part, I think it's worked out, and I, I feel more free because of it. So you can get more free by getting some Bitcoin. Go to ExpressCoin.com. You gotta have to have your Bitcoin wallet ready first. If you don't have one of those, go to Blockchain.com to get one for free. But ExpressCoin.com. Not only can you get Bitcoin over there, you can also hook up with Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, as well as Darkcoin. It's also now available in Canada through ExpressCoin. Com. Go there, get signed up. It's very fast to create an account. You can then pay for your Bitcoin with money order, check, wire transfer, even cash deposit. And again, in the in the U.S. and Canada, ExpressCoin.com. They've even got a smartphone app to make it easier. And because you're a listener of Free Talk Live, you get a special deal. Uh, put in code FTL. If you're buying less than $40 worth of Bitcoin, then you get it for 0%. No transfer fee, no exchange fee. Zero percent. Use code FTL for less than forty dollars. If it's over forty bucks, there's no code. Uh, it, over forty bucks, it's only three percent, which is also the best deal you're probably going to find on the internet for transferring one currency to bitcoins. So check it out. Derek, you're an alt guy. Um, what about alt coins? Love them. Okay, I'm into alt coins. All right. ExpressCoin.com. You can get a few of the altcoins there. There's hundreds of altcoins, so ExpressCoin has selected probably the four <laughs> or so that popular they ones. think are the most useful. So go and check it out at ExpressCoin.com. We'll get back into the so-called social contract here in a moment. Chris is with us first, though, claiming to be in Antarctica. Hello, Chris. Hey, guys. I have here? a uh, very sad story for you. Mm-hmm. I, uh, On my way out of the place I'm living right now, I've been ticketed four times. In the past two weeks, I uh, had some like a trash barrel in my driveway, had like a sink on the side of my house, and then two parking tickets. So the first one, I get a ticket in my driveway. Now, hold on a second. You are not in Antarctica. I don't believe there are driveways or neighborhoods in Antarctica. Good call, you Ian. You caught him. You would not believe how fascist the penguins are. <laughs> <laughs> you can't negotiate with them. You think it was the polar bears, but they're so big they don't need to. It's the penguins; they have a complex. But let me let me just get back to the story. I, right. I may or may not confirm or deny what you're saying there. But <laughs> well, I, so I sincerely I hope you're not claiming the polar bears live in Antarctica. Go ahead. <laughs> Antarctica, whatever. <laughs> I'm the expert. So <laughs> I get I get a ticket for parking in my driveway, right? Right, and. It's because my truck is sticking out a little onto the sidewalk. I'm, that's making me a little... So the next day, I'm too scared to park in my own driveway, so I park on the street. And the same guy gives me a one-two combo because my sticker, the, the sticker on my plate is like, you know, 10 days overdue. So I get a $50 ticket for that. So over the course of two weeks, I get like $250 worth of tickets, just one after another. And I'm thinking to myself, what, what am I going to do here? And I'm thinking of you guys, and I'm like, okay, so I'm going to take this parking guy, and I'm going to film him because I know how much they love that kind of thing. So I'm going to take mm. my camera out, film him, and I, I'm I'm going to take all this stuff they're hearing, but who knows how it's going to go, right? And it was a perfect time for me to see Ian's video of watching this teen parking enforcement woman walk back and forth 18 times. <laughs> Yes, the, uh, the the the, the most video. recent controversial video posted to uh, freekeen.com. It's stirring up quite a bit of controversy. Uh, but yeah, I was on the streets of Keene. We were doing some outreach actually for a p- political campaign. And while I was out there waiting around, 
I noticed the parking enforcer, so uh, I started to, I grabbed my change and my Robin Hooding cards, because here in Keene, for listeners that are new to the show, we have Robin Hooding that happens here, which is sort of a, a, a noun that has turned into a pronoun that has turned into a verb, and uh, it describes the act of following a parking enforcer around and putting change in expired meters prior to the enforcer reaching said meter, so therefore preventing the enforcer from writing a ticket. I began doing this on the day in question, and she started acting very erratically once we reached the uh, the crosswalk. She would act as though she was going to go ahead and cross and then quickly turn around and walk back in the opposite direction. Then she would turn around the other way and walk and act as though she was going to cross, all the while holding up traffic, uh, mind you, because in New Hampshire, there's uh, some rule that says you have to stop for pedestrians that are at a crosswalk. So the Folks had obediently stopped and were awaiting her to actually walk across the street, but she kept just changing directions. She'd like walk three or four steps out into the street, and then she'd turn right back around as soon as I started following her. And so she was just playing this little game with me. I uh, p- picked up my video camera at some point after after this had happened at that part of, part of the street. I went back to my car, grabbed my camera, and then uh, came back over to where she was to continue Robin Hooding. And she once again started engaging in this turning at 180 degrees and just walking back and forth in a in a straight line. What Never, bizarre behavior! It was very strange, and I called her out on it on camera when she was doing this. And that's what I turned into the video, and I added the pong sound effects to it in a little turn counter of how many times. She she had turned around. But now, aren't people Robin Hooding every day in Keene? I much? believe they are. And yeah. aren't they, uh, you know, keeping close tabs on the parking enforcers so that they I can? I don't know, Mark. I think some so people. So they're just have running around putting coins in meters? I think some people have different uh, attr- approaches to Robin Hooding. I don't agree with those approaches personally, uh, but I understand why they would take them on. And I can't speak for who does this and who doesn't. I know Rich Paul used to do it this way, where they would just go and put coins in expired meters regardless of where the parking enforcer is and to me that feels dishonest because i think that it's not saving anyone if you're not right in front of the parking enforcer if you're not imminently where you know they are going to be to write a ticket then you aren't actually saving anyone from a ticket um so that's that's why i continue to follow the enforcer so i don't know how often that happens Mm. in downtown these days uh, mark but chris you were referring to that video and you said it inspired you well it was in two two ways. So I love the video. It's quite inspirational. And you were doing a commendable job of actually keeping up with all of these crazy moves. And I love that she even picked up a wingman at some point <laughs> yeah. who, who tried to berate you on success. It was, yeah, there was it some was, college was uh, college girl who came up and gave me a piece of her mind and took took the side of the parking enforcer in the video. But unfortunately, as, as inspirational as that was, uh, it she inspired me as well because I, you're, you're, I've met you, Ian. You're a thick guy, uh, but even you were picking up a little bit of a breath at some point, trying to outmaneuver this. this yeah, this yeah, woman. you were, you were, you were, and, you were huffing. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I probably carry around four or five Ians with me, so I was thinking that if I were to make such a video, mine would be about you know 20 times worse. All right, stand by. I want to hear the rest of the story here because you, you, you've been inspired, but not really. We'll find out the rest here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Attention, have you been in a serious automobile accident? Then you need to call our attorneys now. 
We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. That's 800-648-9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Take control. Toll free here. Bring up whatever's on your mind. We've got the social contract still to go as far as uh, we started an article about how it's bunk and we did not finish it. So we will continue that here in a moment and get back into the issue of, well, is the social contract really any different from going out out to eat at a restaurant or going shopping at a grocery store and not knowing what to do? Uh, So I thought that was an interesting conversation. We definitely will continue that. Toll free number is 855-450-FREE. Also, you need to know about ProXPN. If you care about your online privacy, go check out ProXPN. ProXPN.com slash FTL. This will allow you to encrypt your internet connection, meaning that your internet service provider, once you start using ProXPN, your ISP doesn't know what you're doing anymore. Right now, they're probably logging all the websites you visit, every search term that you enter, and in some cases, keeping those logs for up to five years. ProXPN protects you from that. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started with their software. It's free. You just download it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, or Android devices. Linux users, setup's a little different for Linux, but it's uh, it's still pretty simple. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL and get started. When you're ready to upgrade to premium, 
you can get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can access, you can privately torrent, and even get past regionally blocked websites. You'll get it all with a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. So when you're ready to upgrade to premium, use our discount codes to get some sweet discounts. FTL50 is the code that you'll use if you're paying with like your credit card, for instance. You get 50% off of an annual account. That breaks the price down to about 5 bucks a month for this amazing privacy protection. FTL50. FTL like Free Talk Live, and the 50 stands for 50%. But you'll get an even better discount if you pay with Bitcoin for that annual plan and use code FTLBTC. You'll then save 62% off of the annual account with code FTLBTC if you pay with Bitcoin. So ProXPN.com slash FTL. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless we go back to chris he's calling from antarctica or so he claims he says also that uh wherever it is that he actually lives there's apparently some pretty heavy parking enforcement officers that are actually enforcing parking laws at your house so you got in trouble chris for parking in your own driveway uh, because apparently your car was jutting out slightly into the sidewalk area. You were ticketed for that. You then parked, Unlawful jutting? You parked the car in the street after that and were ticketed for something about that. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, it was a one-two combo. I got hit with a 10-day uh, expired parking uh, uh, registration. Uh -huh. Okay. By the people who don't even do the registration. So they were just offended by the fact that I was late even though that money wouldn't actually go to them. Uh, police they officers. Found a way to get it anyway. I don't think police office uh you know police departments uh, do the registration either, but they certainly get the revenue for the ticket. So it's hard to say where yep. the where it, where it goes, but I've always Not all police departments get revenue from the tickets they write here in Keene and in New Hampshire. Uh local this police This may be the only state in the Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right. You can't speak about something as though you know it's true for where that person lives. So be careful when you do that. In New Hampshire, that's not the case. The local police and I think this is the reason why local police write a lot of warnings rather than tickets, because they don't directly uh, benefit in New Hampshire from writing tickets. The state police, I think, might, uh, but the uh, the local boys, I don't think. Yeah, if I can't make generalizations as a talk show host, uh, listen to internationally, uh, the wheels are going to fall off of talk radio. Um, if I have to put a caveat on yeah, everything I, I said. Caveat. This may yeah. not be the case in your area, but in some areas. Here's my caveat. From now um, and all the way into the future, whenever I make a statement, it isn't true for everything everywhere every time it's simply generally true in my estimation and you're also not giving legal advice that's right so um yeah i wonder about car registration it really seems kind of weird to me if you're going to have numbers for the car why do those like the license plate right like i can understand mm -hmm. why you'd want a license a license plate for cars because if it's driving away from a bank robbery you want to be able to say yes it's the car with the this license plate on it mm -hmm. um however why do you need a new sticker every year on that car? Revenue. To, re, that's what it's all about, is it's revenue, revenue, revenue. So I want to hear the rest of Chris's story. So, Chris, you said you were partially inspired to record video of this parking enforcer, but then also you have some weight issues, and so you weren't really feeling like it. What happened? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I was going to follow this guy around, see him, uh, see him, you know, ask him some uh, probing questions. Then I'm thinking, man, if Ian is huffing and puffing, uh, I would be even worse. And then the saddest part of this all, uh, or maybe the happiest, is that all of my brutalist fantasies, like, crumbled in front of me. All those thoughts of, like, all the guns I have, all the all the running around the woods, all the, yeah, the state's going to, you know, come right. get us, and I'll be ready. That's all, you know. You, you couldn't pull crap. out your cell so, phone. And take some video of this guy. <laughs> you realized what a chicken you are. Um, yes, I got it, man. Yeah, I know what this is. It's a very is. sad thing. If we can't even, if we can't even, <laughs> if there's <laughs> even a thought about pulling out a, a camera and doing something, then what, you know, how can any brutalist actually say that they're really going to go at it if it comes down to it? Like, like if all the failures. What is a brutalist? To these people get, so I would say the brutalists are the people who are maybe even looking forward to the showdown before uh, between the state and the, the citizens who are going to rise up uh, to to uh, defend themselves against it. Mm. Have so, any sort of good outcome. Was it physical exhaustion or, or fear of exhaustion that kept you from video recording, or was, was there actually, something else at work? No, it's, it was actually the thought of embarrassment. Uh -huh. So it was the, uh, if I completely would have, pulled it off, but it probably would have looked bad. 
You mean you mean you feel like you would be embarrassed in that some of your friends or family might see it and think negatively of you? Kind of, kind of so the uh, YouTube uh, mafia comment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so if you put something on there and, uh, uh, you know, just the, just the whole thing about that. I, well, I actually— uh, You don't actually I've have to— on YouTube for us. Go ahead. Yep, go ahead. You don't actually well, I, have I've to put it on YouTube. On YouTube for us. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. But who would see it? Well, I don't know. I mean, well, it would I'm depend on how important it was. It. Well, okay, so for instance, uh, let me give you an example. If you just pull out a video camera with the police or parking enforcer or whoever, whichever government bureaucrat we're talking about here, it could be in a government office or any government bureaucrat. If you pull out a video camera, sometimes they will change their behavior. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll change their behavior for the better, and they will behave well, and the video footage isn't really particularly interesting as a result of that. Or sometimes they'll behave worse and get more ridiculous, and then the video footage is worth uploading to YouTube. So, for instance, had I uh, recorded the video of this parking enforcer last week, and had she just simply ignored me and continued walking in the direction she'd originally intended to walk rather than changing direction 18 times in two minutes and acting very ridiculous, then it really wouldn't have been that interesting of a video. I probably wouldn't have uploaded it. I certainly wouldn't have uploaded it to the Free Keen channel. Maybe I would have uploaded it as raw video to Freeman TV Raw, which is sort of this dumping grounds for all kinds of unedited raw video that no one ever really watches, uh, with the, with a few exceptions. So, yeah, I mean... If, if you pull a video camera out, it's a game changer in a lot of cases, and sometimes for the better, to where, oh, okay, well, that wasn't so bad. He was going to write a ticket, but then he ran away. So, you know, it would have been a success. You never know what happens until you actually try it. I feel like I've been where Chris is, too, where I've been afraid to take video when I wanted to really? because I was afraid in the moment. Is this like that, a long time ago? Because, yeah, I mean, if anybody's yeah, not no. afraid of video recording, it's you. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've broken that habit, but, uh, you know, in the early days, I would be nervous that people around me would judge me. That Are you talking was, about when you were yeah. in Philly or when you were here in Keene? Both. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, when I was uh, in my early days as an activist, I remember one time in D.C. when I was walking around with a video camera and uh, highlighting some raw milk activism, and I was f- feeling embarrassed that there were people yeah. looking at me, walking mm-hmm. around with a video camera, judging me, and you know, you have to say, Chris, like, forget those people. You know, you're doing this for you, and as long as you stay calm and you're polite, if there's very little to attack. Thanks for the call, Chris. Appreciate your story. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I feel strong. I, I feel that's a strong feeling in that, that way, too. I mean, it's it's a lot of social pre- pressure mm-hmm. just to shut up, sit there, do whatever you're you know, supposed to do, citizen, until I'm done being a petty little tyrant. Well, plus, uh, people get the people that are around you also don't understand video recording, many of them, and they'll get upset. Derek J., you were attacked recently by a couple of locals <laughs> over your habit of recording things. Yeah. Uh, there's more coming up here. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. A world without breast cancer is a world with more birthdays. And by signing up for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, you will help us get there faster. Because you're helping the American Cancer Society make the greatest impact and save more lives in more communities through groundbreaking research and access to screenings for women who need them. Walk in Making Strides Against Breast Cancer because you can help us finish the fight. Sign up today at makingstrideswalk.org. These days, when I'm in a relationship, I feel like I'm alone. Like there's no one behind the mask. No voice on the other end of the line. Are you looking for a car insurance policy totally devoted to you? At Geico.com, you'll find a sympathetic ear, a shoulder to cry on, butterfly kisses, and easy ways to pay your bill and manage your policy. We're waiting with bated breath to help you save money and talk about your feelings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you hundreds on car insurance. Have you heard? Proactive Plus is faster and better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway and you'll also receive free shipping. Do you have troubled skin? Acne? Well, we have great news. With Proactive Plus, your acne can heal and you can help prevent new breakouts from happening. Don't miss this limited time offer. Give us a call at 800-538-5252 because we're going to let a million people try Proactive Plus risk-free and get two free gifts and also receive free shipping when you call right now. 
You heard it. This offer won't last long. So call Proactive Plus now and you'll receive a 60-day risk-free trial of Proactive Plus, two free extras, and free shipping. Call 800-538-5252. This is our exclusive radio offer, never on TV. Get your risk-free 60-day trial of Proactive Plus with free shipping. That's right, free shipping. Don't wait. Call 800-538-5252. That's 800-538-5252. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp freetalklive.com If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves and do it toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We have Skype. Skype into the show. Our username there is lrn.fm, so feel free to get interactive in the way that works best for you. With you tonight, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Check out more of Derek J. on his website, derekj.me. It's a blog and sort of a, a link extravaganza to all of the other things that you do out there, Derek J. You're very yeah, busy. Yeah, it's really been a perfect solution for anyone who wants to find the things that I'm doing. It's at derekj.me every yeah. time. Easy to remember as well. I like that. So uh, check more of him out, and we're going to check you out with your calls and thoughts here. Let's go to Tom on Skype and calling from Virginia. Hello, Tom. What's going on, guys? You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, um, so I just want to say thanks, man, because I'm recently just kind of found all this Liberty stuff. But you guys oh. were talking the other day about the Pledge of Allegiance and things. And um, so I've been trying to find, like, something for my, like, kid to do other than, like, he does, like, jiu-jitsu Muay Thai. But I was like, oh, Cub Scouts. I did that when I was a kid. And uh, I went to that first meeting tonight and just like out of nowhere, like they, they were throwing around all this religious propaganda and then like the Pledge of Allegiance and just like automatically everyone in the room like stood up mm. and did the Pledge of Allegiance and was like like robots. And I'm just sitting there looking at everybody and they're looking at me like I'm crazy for not standing up. Oh, yeah. This is really odd. But, you're, um, you're now not only are you not uh, you, you're, you're disrespecting the fallen veterans now you're also corrupting the children well now wait you said you brought your son to one of these cub scout things yeah um what was he doing when you were staying seated uh he stood up and then i talked to him at, and that's kind of what i wanted for advice like you know he's only six it's like how do i really explain this to him like it, it's not what what they tell you in school, I asked him, I said, well, do you know what it, what it is to say the Pledge of Allegiance? He's like, no. And I'm like, he's like, well, it's it's for the state, you know, to respect our flag. And I'm trying to explain to him 
at six years old, like, you know, without getting too much into detail about really what it is in a way he can understand. Now, Mark has a six-year-old. Um, however, Mark, your son does not go to a government school, so I don't imagine he's coming across the Pledge of Allegiance, if at all. At no, I, he has no no contact with the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, How would you explain it? I mean, it's, you know, if you were at a city council meeting or something like that, and then that happened. I think it's probably easiest to just say that's these people's religion. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't see what else it it's is. It's true. It's I mean, a true it's, statement. It looks a lot like a, a religious act. I, I mm-hmm. don't really know how to describe it otherwise. It's chanting towards an yeah. idol. There's a lot of uh, ancestor worship involved. Um, you know, you'll hear people talk about the soldiers and the founding fathers and things like that. That's, uh, you know, ghosts. I, I mean, it, it, it. to me, it's just a lot, a lot like... Uh, you know, worshiping, saying a prayer to a graven image. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I try to tell him like what you guys said. I'm like, well, like when you said the other day that you know flags are really just war banners and identification purposes for either on the sea or uh, you know, or when you're in a conflict to see who's on what side and you know who's friend or foe. And uh, he kind of got that, but he still kind of looked at me like, "What are you talking about? You're crazy." But I told him, I said, "Look, you don't have to say it." Um, but we got up and left out of there just because the, the um, I don't know, I just wasn't digging all the propaganda and it was really unorganized. Yeah. yeah There's people, also the campfire, campfire kids, I think is what it's called. Um, so it's another sort of, is this as a competitor to Boy Scouts or something? Yeah. It, what is, is it better in some way? Do they not have the religious overtones, the state worship? So I've heard. I don't know a lot about now, isn't it. Isn't it true? There's also, at least in New Hampshire, some sort of a group that is being created. Yes. What's that called? Uh, I think it's called uh, Liberty Scouts or Freedom Scouts or something uh-huh. like that being okay. created. So taking away the, the, the whole, all of the statist doctrine that you would find in, in a group like the Boy Scouts hmm. and actually, you know, just teaching survival skills and camping stuff and doing all the boy stuff, you know, that you'd want it, you'd expect to see out of uh, a group like that, but without the overtones of worshiping the state. Do you that think sounds like a good idea. Do you think there's some benefit to teaching youngsters, you know, how to get along with other statists? Because they're going to encounter them for most of their lives. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just like you would teach someone how to get along with the uh, Je- Jehovah's Witnesses who are going to come knock at the door. I mean, it's, it's always nice to be pleasant to people. and Free rangers know, is what it's called on, on Facebook. Not be mean to them. I mean, I had some Jehovah's Witnesses come by here the other day, and I was very nice to yeah, them. Yeah, but I mean more so, like, going along to get along type of stuff. Like, isn't that sometimes a valuable lesson? Like, hey, kid, you don't want to be the weird kid, so go ahead and say the pledge. No, if you I don't think that's be- a dangerous lesson. Yeah, I mean, why? I don't why think, would someone who is I don't a, think that there's anything wrong with uh, just saying... just because they don't want to get beat up or they don't want to be the odd kid or something. Sometimes, I think you got to choose it for sometimes yourself. Sometimes camouflage is like a valuable skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think you have to choose choose the you know radical step for yourself. Um, and I would say that the the best choice for a kid is just you know just stand and you know do just stand there, show some level of res- you know people consider that the minimum level of respect. So you know. That's a that's a thing to do. But Cub Scouts is you're full on both feet in state status indoctrination at that uh, that point. I still remember this is what they do is they indoctrinate you. I promise to do my best to do my duty to God, my country and obey the laws of the pack. I mean, (laughs) it's full on. (laughs) I remember when I was in Boy Scouts, uh, my parents made me do something after I quit. Was it gymnastics or something like that? I quit doing something else that I was doing. And so they've they've made me do You're going to be well-rounded. Something uh, (laughs) to take its its place. And (laughs) I never actually said the oath. They wanted me to swear this oath thing, and (laughs) I wouldn't do it. Well, that was because at that time, I wasn't so much anti-state as I was anti Anti-religion. I mean, I've never liked authority at the same time. So, in order to like get to the rank of actual Boy Scout, to where then you can start getting the patches, I guess. So you have to get the Scout patch first, which means you have to be willing to swear their little oath thing and say the Pledge of Allegiance. And I wouldn't do any of that stuff. So I never even got to uh, to the rank. I was skipping the meetings and things like that, and hanging out outside rather than go in. I couldn't stand that organization. But I like the camping. I did go camping with them once and and had fun. But that was it. Hey, Tom, anything else you want to share? No, I well, I just think Mark had a good point there. Like, I wouldn't want to tell my kid not to stand because next thing you know, 
you know, CPS is going to be standing mm. at my door saying, uh, what are you teaching your kid or, you know, mm. getting in the mix of things. You, you know what I mean? You know how that stuff goes. But unfortunately, you know, my wife and I both have to work, so we can't. Yep. Yeah. That's if anybody gives you. you anybody in the family or whatever gives you flack, go to YouTube, search whitest kids you know pledge. And I think it <laughs> really sums it up. It is a uh, it, it's it's just a, a brilliant uh, piece of social commentary on the Pledge of Allegiance yeah. and how they have these little kids pledging allegiance when they don't know what it means um, and what a, allegiance means and promising to go and kill the other little kids of other countries if the case ever comes to that. And I mean, it's just it, it it's, it's just pretty funny. Yeah, because I mean, they're from. I don't know that there's a Canadian pledge. As I understand it, there is no pledge to the flag in most countries. Certainly not one that they have to say on a regular basis, um, like you know, every single day, like we did in in government school when Tom, I was there. Tom, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate yeah. it. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. I, I mean, I understand that that's got to be a real struggle for parents, especially parents sending their kids to the government schools. Is like. Okay, you don't like as parents, you understand the state's a terrible idea. You are pro freedom, but yet there you are. You're sending your kids to these state schools, and then you're afraid because if your kid says something about you smoking pot at your house or you know some other belief system that you might have that the state may find dangerous, that all of a sudden an investigation can be launched, your children can be taken away from you on a moment's notice, on a whim, on the say so of some anonymous tipster or some bureaucrat with an agenda. And I can understand that that would be very scary at the same same time and I don't have a child so you know obviously take this with a grain of salt but I would like to think that I would encourage my child to stand up for themselves and to in this case sit down for themselves during the pledge and and that I'd let them know I'd be there to back them uh, you know, in whatever well, trouble they got into. For I, I think that that is something that one should do. But I think you said stand up for themselves. And that's what yeah. they have to do. They need to not stand up because Uncle Ian says it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And they need instead to stand up because they have a strong feeling one way or the other about it. And the fact that you had a strong feeling about it, I think, is unusual. I think that most kids just want to get along go along to get along in order to get through the Maybe. really uncomfortable period of time we call young adulthood childhood and young adulthood i, can, I was anti authority as long as i can remember i don't know why maybe you are born that way maybe some people are born that way i i think that i think that's absolutely true that some are some people you know there's nature nurture i don't know what the argument is but somewhere along the line you got messed up <laughs> I think my parents did a fine job, actually. Thanks very much. <laughs> let's let's get them on the phone and talk to them about it. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We still have more to talk about with the social contract. We haven't gotten through all the aspects that make that total bunk. We'll get into that here in a little bit. Also, the question about, well, is going into a restaurant and eating, you know, sitting down and then paying or not paying, is that a social contract that's involved in that, too, an unspoken agreement? Uh, we'll come back with more. You're welcome to share your thoughts here. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs... Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, September 15th, 2014. Gold open today, $1,235. Silver open at $18.61. And Bitcoin is trading around $477. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. This political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, the Liberty Beat conducted an interview last week with Austin Fusion Center officials about the recent scandal surrounding emails obtained by the Austin Chronicle, which show APD officials, in defiance of their own privacy policy, using the Austin Regional Intelligence Center to investigate protest organizers who have committed no crimes. In the emails, United States Marshal Service officials who oversee the district court where a move to amend rally was to be held are advised to reach out to APD contacts to receive help investigating Michael Ryan, organizer of the protest. After the email thread gets forwarded to David Gerald, then supervisor of the APD Intelligence Unit, Gerald replies stating that he will send this over to Sergeant James Bujima from our Fusion Center. They are up to speed on groups like this, or they get up to speed very quick. Now, during Friday's Austin Public Safety Commission meeting, Liberty Beat reporter John Bush asked the new commander of ARIC, Daryl Jamal, if the Fusion Center collects information on organizers of political protests. We do monitor social media, but we're not looking at particular groups or particular individuals. What we do is we look at where the event is supposed to occur and see what kind of activity is being talked about. We don't record it. We don't keep it, and we're not looking at who those groups are unless they start talking about we want to incite a riot, let's, you know, let's take arms. The statement made by Jamal seems to contradict the email correspondence between Supervisor David Gerald and Sergeant James Bujema. To see the full report on this matter, visit thelibertybeat.com. New documents released to The Intercept and Spiegel detail a top-secret NSA program called Treasure Map. The program appears to be an effort to map the entire global internet by identifying and locating every single device connected to the internet. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos. Now with two locations in Austin, 500 East Benway Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, cabobobs.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is The Liberty Beat for Monday, September 15th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com TheLibertyBeat. On Friday, a federal appeals court ruled in favor of freedom for military surveillance in a controversial case involving child pornography. The case deals with Michael Dreyer, who was convicted and sentenced to 18 years in prison in 2012 for possessing and distributing child porn. The 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco voted 2-1 to one to overturn the conviction of Dreyer because the U.S. Navy violated the Posse Comitatus Act when they conducted a search of computers throughout the entire state of Washington. The Naval Criminal Investigative Service in Georgia used a software program to search computers in the state for evidence of child pornography. The home of a Bitcoin miner was raided after a Virginia electric company tipped off local law enforcement. Suspected of operating a marijuana grow house, the SWAT raid resulted in the confiscation of his miners and a suspended sentence for possession of marijuana and drug paraphernalia. Bitcoin miners are powerful machines that verify transactions on the Bitcoin network. They utilize significant power to run and keep cool. This is not the first time law enforcement has raided a home expecting to find a grow house, only to find a house full of legally operating Bitcoin mining computers. Should law enforcement raid homes based on energy consumption alone? Well, let us know your thoughts at thelibertybeat.com. Do you know someone who was a victim of a mistaken SWAT raid? Tell us all about it on our Facebook page, facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. 
A new study from Northwestern University's Auditory Neuroscience Laboratory in Illinois has found evidence that community-based music lessons for at-risk youth can create positive biological effects on their brains. Published in the Journal of Neuroscience, the study followed 44 children between the ages of 6 and 9. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat, brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM. Located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, September 15th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A mouse is eaten. It is an event that happens millions of times a day. All over the world. Other mice are wiped out by disease or starvation. If you collected all the mice that die in one day in New York City, they would weigh 8,000 pounds. If you stacked up an equivalent amount of dead humans or even mangy dogs, it would be considered an atrocity. It seems no one has any respect for the mouse. But then, why should they? The plankton of mammals. They breed rapidly. They all look identical, and they once spread the plague. No one weeps for the mouse, for its life is worth less than zero. Just another cold fact of life on this horrifying planet. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, dial here toll free. The number is 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. With you tonight, it's Ian, Derek J, and Mark. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Lots of features there waiting for you. They're all totally free, so enjoy. Again, that's freetalklive.com. If you're just tuning in, we were talking about the social contract in the last hour, but we didn't actually get through the whole piece over at caseyresearch.com about why the social contract is total bunk. In fact, they say it's a fraud and anyone trying to enforce it is acting criminally. Uh, but first, we're going to continue with your phone calls and thoughts. We've got Don. He's in St. George, Utah, listening to KZNU. Hello, Don. Hello. Hey, you're on the air. Uh, thanks for having me on. Welcome. I just had a, maybe a different perspective about the Pledge of, Liber- of Allegiance. Okay, sure. Um, you guys sound pretty entrenched or, or at least uh, determined about your point of view, but I wanted to offer a different one just for consideration. But yeah. um, just, out of curiosity, have you guys, are any of you married? I'm married. Yeah, and did you did you have kind of a rite that you went through with that? Yeah, we, uh, we went through an Anglican uh, uh, service because it was pretty much the only yeah. thing that we could get done um, in, on short of short notice. And also I had worked at the church at the radio station, so, uh, you know, I got a relatively good deal um, as far as the, uh, yeah, the cost so, of it. So- but I, I made sure he didn't say Jesus, but he slipped in Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost on me. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, anyway, this this isn't a religious uh, conversation, but more just that there are uh, rights and cultures. Uh, if you've signed a contract, um, you make agreements, and we have traditions too that are fun, uh, fun traditions. And some religions or some people may not, you know, agree with those traditions for whatever reason. But within a family. There's traditions that everyone look, looks forward to. And my, my perspective specifically on the Pledge of Allegiance is that um, while, while I, I actually appreciate your argument about it, and I think there is an element um, to consider with what you're saying, but for me personally, and I think for a lot of people who have sacrificed for uh, what to them is liberty and justice for all, I mean, that's the that's you know, this is the nation for which it stands that we we love. And so I think we're not, in, in our hearts, we, we're not feeling like we're pledging allegiance to a state. Uh, although, again, I'm not going to take argument with what you said, but rather to the ideal for which it stands, liberty and justice for all. And I think this is what a lot of uh, people who, who stand and have made sacrifices, and certainly it'd be a hard argument to make, that we as a, as American people have not benefited from people who have gone on before us and made selfless sacrifices to better the world. 
uh, and and to better our you know our place of living. So just a different perspective there. So what you're saying is, let me make sure I've understood what you said here, is that uh, when you're engaging in the Pledge of Allegiance, you feel as though not so much uh, you're not really concerned with what the, the pledge actually says, but how you feel about the pledge, and you feel like oh, no. it's... I'm not saying that. I, I think that... Um... I think that you guys have interpreted the pledge a certain way, and I'm very clear on exactly what it says. It, it, it says, you know, to this nation for which it stands, and then goes on to identify the ideals. And to me, you guys are sort of cutting that part out. So I, I'm not I like saying the I'm ideals. ignoring what it says. I, I like all yeah, the well, ideals. So do I. But my concern is, right. is and, and the reason, like, so here is my movement. I was definitely a pledge sayer at one point, and my sure. the, the way I sort of transitioned was, A, I found out that the pledge was written by a national socialist, a Nazi, and that the original salute to it looked much more like the salute that the Nazis do than it does the hand over the heart thing. They had to modify that after World War II because, you know, Americans just weren't really into that, or actually it was a little before World War II. Americans weren't into that Nazi salute thing once uh, Hitler started doing it and that really bothered me and it got to me thinking about it and then what i realized well, is it's uh, well, well, let me finish and i'm just telling you my journey yeah. and what i realized sure. for me was is that the pledge is an empowering uh statement it, it it gives power to the government because there is no country there is no republic there is no uh, American people. There's a group of people in Washington, D.C. that say that they rule over you. You can either choose to accept that or you cannot choose to accept that. I like eagles. I like the colors red, white, and blue. I like it when F-18s fly over football games. <laughs> I like that stuff. But, um, you know, when it comes to I, when it comes to giving those people in Washington, D.C. power, I realize by standing there, putting my hand over my heart and looking at that, their their battle uh, flag um, that I'm, I'm empowering them by giving them consent to everybody who's in the room. And that if I refuse the consent that I can do one small, tiny little drop of disempowering those people in Washington, D.C. Well, just just to say, I, I actually quite admire your point of view and I share it quite a bit. I. I do not like the way, uh, you know, the, the government is grabbing power and the ideals of liberty and justice for all are really slipping away. I think well, yeah. it's evident to most of us. So I, 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 I actually appreciate your point of view. Well, isn't there some danger my, then, Don? I mean, if you can recognize, as we do on this yeah. show, that, you know, liberty and justice for all is a joke uh, of an idea in this country. And it probably never was accurate. I mean, there have always been people in search of power lording it over others. We just know more about it now than we w might have done 200 years ago because information travels more effectively today. Uh, but isn't it sort of, you know, if, if there's no real liberty to be found and there's no real justice uh, to be found in the United States, by participating in the pledge and or buying, uh, by encouraging uh, our sons and daughters to participate in the pledge, to just go along to get along, doesn't that help the government continue its legitimacy in, in, in people's minds to make people think this idea that, oh, well, it's the best country in the planet. It's the freest country in the, on the planet. We're so free here because, well, they've repeated it over and over again as they're very, very young and very, of course, when you're young and you're repeating things over and over again, it's indoctrination. And so they, they grow up to believe these things, which, of course, aren't actually true. And doesn't that kind of create something that's not real in people's minds? And isn't that dangerous? Well, I don't think so completely. I, well, I look. I think this is an argument that can be made with taxes too. Paying taxes is a is a dilemma, right? I mean, we're empowering this big machine that is that is consistently taking away our our uh, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So it, it's the same dilemma. Now, is saying the pledge of allegiance dangerous? I'll just make the argument that. It, absolutely not, unless you feel it is, then okay. But I, I think you guys ought to just consider that many people who, who say it are preserving in their minds and in their hearts the ideal for which we stand. And when, when it no longer, and, and look, when you say there's no liberty to found, I, I think that's just simply not true. There is liberty to be found here. I've lived in other countries. I'm very clear on the path we're on to socialism and and destroying wealth and so on. I'm an economics professor at Dixie State University. I, I get it. Uh, however, um, there's. I think it's more dangerous not to preserve 
the uh, the understanding with our children uh, for the ideals for which we stand and to recognize when we veered off course. I think I can. Tra- I think I can uh, help. To work at that. I think I can help young people understand those ideals without having to have them read an indoctrination fine. chant on a regular basis, without really ultimately well, even fine. knowing what they're saying. I think the Pledge of Allegiance is an incredibly dangerous uh, tool for indoctrination, and that's exactly why Francis Francis Bellamy, the creator of the pledge, put it out there because he wanted to indoctrinate people. In fact, it, the message of the pledge is contrary to what should be you know, you would think okay. the message of this country. If indeed America is all about rights, you know the Bill of Rights, which are supposedly supporting the individual and your freedom to pursue life in the way that you want, so long as you don't harm anybody else. That's a very individualistic thing, whereas the uh, Pledge of Allegiance is all talking about not de-individualizing people, uh, that, you know, one nation, all together, you know, indivisible. And again, I don't have a problem with people coming together for a common cause. That doesn't bother me. But uh, it's it's not really pushing a message of individual freedom at all. They throw the word liberty in there, but that means different things to different people. I understand the uh, pr- well, professor's look, posi- I, I'm position. I'm not going to change your interpretation of it. But no. for me, no, it doesn't represent anything dangerous. It, it's no more dangerous to me than it would be to you if you didn't teach your kids ideals. And I think once there isn't anything in the pledge that I think, other than the way you've interpreted it, that, that makes me feel like it's dangerous. Thanks, Don. Uh, however, I appreciate the I call. I do appreciate hearing from you. Uh, just to me, seeing people rise in unison and chant together, that seems creepy, and it seems culty as well. More coming up. This is Free Talk Live. You take control. Bellawood Flooring has changed its finishing process. So for the first time ever, Lumber Liquidators is clearing out their current stock of Bellawood at unbelievable prices. Get Bellawood Red Oak Solid pre-finished hardwood for an incredible $2.99 per square foot. That's over 30% off already low prices. Even stunning, solid Bellawood Bolivian Rosewood for an amazing 51% off. These are not seconds. This is first quality with a transferable 100-year warranty. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 18-month financing is available. But hurry, these clearance deals end Tuesday. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free and bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and it's brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. Drewsdefense.org. Who is Drew? He's Andrew Michael Jones. Some would say he was one of the administrators of the Silk Road. That's what the FBI is accusing him of being. They're saying he was the administrator known as Inigo, and there were only four people arrested in operation of the regarding operation of the Silk Road, and uh, he was one of those four. The uh, <laughs> Mark's getting out of his chair. Uh, someone's yelling outside the uh, the studio window here. Anyway, uh, Andrew Michael Jones is a Free State Project participant, so he's a little bit closer to the three of us here and and many others than perhaps Ross Ulbricht or the other gentlemen who've been arrested, and. So therefore, I've taken a bit of more interest in in this case. Uh, we actually, I actually got to meet him. I don't know if the two of you were around when he came to town. I don't remember it now. Um, he came to town with his girlfriend, Peace Birdie, and they were hanging out at social Sundays here. And I don't remember how many days they were in town for, but it seemed like it was just a you know maybe a weekend or maybe they're traveling around the state, kind of checking out New Hampshire, looking to make the move up here. And as many free staters are one to do. Yeah, and they're what a cool name. I would want to be friends with a Peace with Peace Birdie. Birdie? Yeah. So uh, he and his girlfriend were here, and they were very, very nice folks. And obviously, I was surprised when she reached out to me to say that he's now on house arrest and is facing the rest of his life in prison for being one of the alleged administrators of the Silk Road, the underground uh, black and drug market that is available on tour, which, of course, the Silk Road has never been down for more than a month. It was taken down last year by the FBI in October and came back as Silk Road 2.0 a month later. So it's still there. The FBI hasn't stopped online drug sales. They've just actually they made, stopped Silk Road. They actually made them more prolific because when Silk Road went down, a couple competitors popped up and some of them are still around. So uh, he's facing prison for the rest of his life. He's never harmed anybody. None of the allegations against him involve any victims. Uh, it's conspiracy to commit money laundering, conspiracy to sell drugs, conspiracy to hack, I believe, or to facilitate hacking. And that's it, from what I understand. He's not being charged with a kingpin statute, as uh, Ross Ulbricht is, who's the man who they're accusing of being the uh, the founder of the Silk Road. And he's also not being accused, as Ross Ulbricht is. being. Ross has been uh, just been tarnished with this terrible accusation of hiring hitmen now there don't there doesn't appear to be much evidence for that but andrew jones doesn't have that they haven't accused him of doing anything like that so if anything his case seems a little bit more crystal clear than uh than ross's case um however ross has been getting all of the publicity in the in the issue and and andrew jones has been getting next to zero publicity so he could really use some help and he's got a defense fund set up over at drewsdefense.org that's drewsdefense.org Dot org. If you want to help him out, you can do it with PayPal. You can do it with Bitcoin, as I did. So again, DrewsDefense.org. In fact, uh, can we announce, uh, Derek J., what's coming up at Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's appropriate to uh, announce now. The, and please go ahead if, if you like. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say. Well, it's kind of your party. All right. You're... So yeah, I'm throwing this party uh, the first night of Keenvention, a Halloween party. October 31st. Yes. And uh, there will be a Drew's Defense hospitality room where we're looking to raise money for Drew. Uh, I think it's a worthy effort. He's a hero of mine uh, for for the actions 
that he's even alleged to have done. Who mm-hmm. knows uh, what his actual involvement is, but. Um, I think it's important. He actually has a winnable case, it seems to me. and I hope so. I if it know. gets enough attention. Well, it seems to me that it would be winnable. I say that because um, it, it would be the first time, I think, that someone operating a website would be charged with the things that people are doing on, on that website. Site. You know, and, and that's a dangerous precedent to set. For sure. If people are interested in preserving internet freedom, this is a, a very serious case to watch and one that actually could be won, but it needs more attention. So DrewsDefense.org, I'm looking to raise attention to it by throwing a Halloween party and uh, throwing him the proceeds. I think it's a fantastic idea, and you can go to Keenvention.info, learn more about the event. We'll look forward to seeing you there. It's October 31st. Through November 2nd, so we've been talking about the uh, social contract, and I want to get back into that here. But Mark, you had brought up an interesting point in the last hour about this discussion we were having about the social contract. It's not a real contract because it doesn't meet the definition of contract. And the article over at caseyresearch.com is going into the details there, but pointing out that you have to be competent uh, in order to enter a contract. You know, you can't have a, a small child enter into an agreement because they don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know what they're talking about. It has to be voluntary. You can't put a gun to somebody's head and then, you know, have them sign on a dotted line and say that that's a legitimate contract. That person was forced into it. And there's a few more points that we haven't gotten to yet, but Mark, you had said that. Well, what about the, you know, what what about going into a restaurant? I mean, there's no set of instructions. You don't sign a contract when you walk in the restaurant to say that I agree that I will sit and I will be quiet and uh, be co- courteous to my uh, my fellow restaurant eaters, and that afterwards I will pay the bill when it uh, when it comes. And I understand all of these terms, and you know, that's kind of the point you were making. Isn't that essentially tantamount to? the government's social contract? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that what you were saying? To some extent, I would say that that is an argument that I have heard for the social contract. Hey, wait, there's a big difference between eating in a restaurant and agreeing to some nebulous, not actually on paper social contract. I mean, the eating in a restaurant, that's not on paper either, but at least the... So what is the difference? Well, the uh, owner of the property, it's being the owner of a thing that gives you the right to make rules about a thing. So, like, if you own a business, you should have the right to um, decide what the rules are inside that business. And so if your rule is uh, you'll serve people and then they pay, well, that's your rule, and you own the, the property. So it's legitimate to enforce that rule. But with the social contract, people claim, well, you're on this uh, property, this, this property owned by the state, and so you have to abide by the state's rules. But I don't think the state acquired the land or the property legitimately. I don't think they're the legitimate owners. So they, they don't get to make the rules about the thing. Um, I think that that's... It's interesting. That's a uh, good point. It's a good point. It's so um, so the state uh, in you know when we're talking about the United States, one thing's for certain: the United States has its uh, moral authority or whatever it might be um, based on winning a war, right? Like you know the continental the continental folks fought a war against the king who had whatever right to the people's uh, the, the the fruits of the people's labor and then they won the right to those the fruits of those people's labor or the land they're on or I'm not exactly sure what because sure. the government claims the right to your labor the right to your land and then sort of the right to do whatever the hell it wants beyond that too mm-hmm. so there's these two aspects and then there's this third nebulous aspect and I think the best argument to me against the social contract is what is it like what I just want to know the provisions of the contract. Like what are the terms? Right. I, I need to know the terms. The terms are you do what they say or else. That's what the terms are. And if like nobody will tell you that because that doesn't sound like a social contract Mm-mm. at all. That sounds like social servitude. It sounds like they're claiming rulership and ownership of you and I. That's now good- if that were the terms Let's go ahead and lay them out. But I don't need to be lied to you by you stinking people. That's how I feel. That's an interesting point, because at least if you were to go into the restaurant, you could ask, okay, well, this is a social contract, and what are the terms? Well, the terms are you're going to pay the bill at yep. the end. You're, you're going to order things. You're going to be behaved. You're uh, going to behave you're yourself. You're going to eat your food. Yeah. You're going to leave in a timely manner. You're going to pay your bill. Um, you know, you're not going to make too much of a mess. Whereas with the social contract, if you if you even could get the list of terms, which of course would be impossible because you know it would be as long as all the tomes of law out there that would be impossible to read but it would always change too right like because every year laws are changing there's always new laws being added and so it's not even like a it's not even like a firm thing if it even was at one point it's constantly being modified the toll-free number here is 855-450-free but yet you're supposed to know what all the terms are free talk live 
Summertime is safe big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Andrew Michael Jones is a liberty-loving activist and participant in the Free State Project. He's also been accused of being one of the administrators of the infamous Silk Road anonymous black marketplace. Andrew is facing a federal trial for multiple crimes with no victim. Whether or not he's the Silk Road administrator named Inigo, he has not been accused of harming anyone. In fact, the Silk Road is actually an amazing advancement that has reduced the overall harm of the black market to both customers and drug sellers. Whether or not he did it, Andrew, like alleged Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht deserves the support of people who love liberty. Visit DrewsDefense.org to learn more and contribute to his defense. You can donate via PayPal or in Bitcoin, as I did. That's DrewsDefense.org. Drew's family does not have much, and his parents have put up their home and both retirement incomes to secure a $1 million bond on Andrew. He's currently on 24-7 house arrest and is prohibited from touching any device that could connect to the Internet. Please contribute to his defense fund via DrewsDefense.org. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Following the announcement of First Communion, The Holy Spookerist, the first hardcore pornographic movie to be filmed in Vatican City since 1982's classic adult feature Pope Fisters 4, Onion Reporter spoke to Herschel Savage, director of the film. It's a huge honor for me and everyone else involved with this film. This is where they shot Pope Fisters 4. I mean, that movie's a masterpiece. Well, when we wrote up the script, we sent it over to the Vatican to get the Pope's approval and see if he had any notes, but uh, he loved it just the way it was. The highly anticipated pornographic film, which stars Ron Jeremy as the horny sea himself, Pope Benedict the 69th, will reportedly contain graphic sex scenes filmed in the Sistine Chapel, St. Peter's Square, and the Pope Mobile, among various other notable sites within the Vatican. Well, actually, I'm just watching a cut of this amazing scene we shot last night where Pope Benedict is gang banging a bunch of nuns in his bed. And it was great because the Pope let us use his bedroom. Tomorrow, we're shooting the scene where two nuns fuck each other on St. Peter's tomb using strap on crucifixes. I think people are really going to like this movie. This is the Onion News Network. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in here at 855-450-FREE. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there waiting for you. We give them all away, so go to freetalklive.com. And you can also get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there. It's really great coffee. It's Buzzbox coffee. And it's delicious, shade-grown, 100% organic 
top 1% grade Arabica beans. You're never going to taste coffee better than BuzzBox coffee. It's that good. And you can get a free pound simply by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. Derek agrees? It's great. It's great coffee. Um, please, just go get your free pound. Sign up for the subscription there. And if you like the coffee, continue to get your coffee there. It'll be an upgrade in your coffee drinking experience. And you'll help us help people around the world with microloans through Kiva.org. Uh, I've been on board with Kiva for years now, and I think it's a great organization and well worth uh, supporting people there. We've managed to support people in uh, Armenia, in uh, Gaza, in Peru, in Uganda, Get sewing machines, restaurant equipment, uh, fix a taxi cab, uh, get some cows. I mean, we're really helping people here, and you can help us help more people because not only do we um, help these folks by giving them some money, but we loan it to them, they pay the money back, and then we can give the money to somebody else. This is uh, you know, creating something in perpetuity, and that's what we hope to do. Uh, please uh, help us by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. We've been talking about the social contract, and what does it really even mean? Isn't it just total BS? That's the argument here from CaseyResearch.com. The author of the story is Paul Rosenberg. He says the social contract is a fraud, and anyone trying to enforce it is acting criminally. You're welcome to give your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Uh, of course, I don't remember signing any kind of social contract. No one ever has. It's a ridiculous claim that is a claim made by those who support the state as their reason for why things are the way they are. It's a social contract. It kind of explains things. It says that uh, you know man gives up a certain amount of man's freedom in order mm. to live in Congress with other men. It's the, the cost of living in a civilized society, yeah, right? The obedience. And I cost. think that there's an argument for that, but what we call that is manners. And the idea of giving powers, superpowers to the government, because I think well, that— social it, contract is not about manners. It's about obedience. It's, it's about doing what you're told. Right. Well, they, they guise it in manners, though. Like, you're a good person if you give money to this inefficient organization mm. that doles out money to a bunch of, uh, you know, lazy right. people and powerful corporations. And if you don't do that, you're bad. And, or if you even just call out the, th the thieves, like I did with the parking enforcer video, you're a bad person. Even people within the liberty movement are critical of, uh, of that video. Also, Derek, you know, classic video involving you and me with the, uh, the lady who's the crossing guard. One of the most, the, one of the most unpopular videos that we've ever produced. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's still something that people bring bring up as a evidence of how awful of, of human beings we are because we should apparently just stand by quietly as uh, you in this case were attacked by uh, this woman uh, physically assaulted apparently we we're just supposed to not say things about that and not you know record video of being attacked yeah, if well, they're old. I guess I consented to that uh, without well, knowing it. That's, that's, that's part, part of the, the contract. That, right. that the old well, women could come up and hit you with stop signs apparently, anytime they want. It, that's part of the thing that really confuses me about the social contract is that despite my uh, pr insistence that I do not agree... I am constantly told by proponents of the social contract that, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you have agreed. Now, I think that what's important about that video with that old woman is, is that, for me, I didn't change my opinion on that video until I realized Derek J. was just trying to get some shots of some kids crossing a street with a crossing guard, right? Yes, that's correct. Right. Like, this old lady just went bananas. She, sure. had, she had a story that she'd created in her mind about government bureaucrats being harassed by people with cameras. So when somebody wants to get, some, get a shot mm -hmm. so that they can create a montage, a, a video, create a, a movie... Of of you know just some kids and including some B roll of some kids it's like a news package crossing. like what you would get with a typical local news you know I was uh, practicing for a local news show that we did here in Keene at the time would she have swatted somebody who was carrying a camera from WMUR probably not because those are big cameras and they're much more intimidating mm -hmm. but I think the point you're making Mark is while it can be true is not necessarily uh, always the case so for instance. Uh, a lot of people are just afraid of cameras. A lot of people. It doesn't matter that they have a narrative about being a government bureaucrat. There's. Some... I don't know what her narrative was. Right. But there's some... he wasn't doing anything to her. You sure, see, but there's most, a video. But, there's but a... most people say, you went up and you were hassling that lady. And no, yeah, you no. weren't. <laughs> there's a... And that's important for people to confront in their minds. If that's what you believe, you are GD wrong.
Yeah. Well, in the beginning of the video in question, all that happens is Derek turns his camera on and then he says he hello says, to this woman. And then she yeah. turns around and swings at him uh, and yells. But and she looked at him first and that's why he greeted her with hello. Okay. Well, regardless, um, and some people believe that there was some sort of uh, prelude to this wherein we were harassing her or something on the side of the road, which of course wasn't the case at all. Uh, but nonetheless, my point was going to be that whether she had some sort of narrative in her mind about cameras and being a government agent, I don't think is necessarily the case. There are just some people who they just don't like being recorded. There was a YouTube channel I was watching recently where their gig apparently is to just go walk down a public street oh, recording video. Yeah. And they're not trying specifically to record one person or another. They're just simply going and recording their day as though they were just walking down a downtown street, recording the process of walking down a street. And eventually they come, they just come across people who just take a personal issue with the fact that somebody well, has a video camera people, out recording them. People are, are freaking out over this Google Glass thing, right? Like somehow you're part of the NSA spying on them or something like that. I don't know. But I think it's very interesting. This is a question America needs to, and the world's going to need to come across at some point. And the question is, is do I, as a free, whole, and sovereign individual, have the right to record my day? That what I do during my day, do I have the right to record that? And not in some places, no. If you're making you a phone call here in New Hampshire, you do not. You have the oh, I'm, a right is something that comes from within, uh, not the dirty, stinking, lying politicians <laughs> writing that crap okay. down. Okay, that's really important for us to distinguish. So the question is, do I have the right to do that, or do people on the street whom I've never met, who are out in public, who um, you know. D didn't know that I was going to be recording out there. Do they have the right to not to be blurred out? Do to I stop you? Do, do I have yeah. a, a, a? Do I have to edit the video? Do I have to put in all these extra hours to edit the video? They don't even know what I'm going to do with the video. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who are these people, and what is it? What's their expectation of wandering around out in public? I don't know. I don't know either. It's really it's a, it's a question that people need to answer. Who has the right here? Share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. From my experience with some of these people who are very anti-don't-record-me uh, type folks, and look, I don't really generally have an interest in recording you. If you're just the average person on the street and you're doing going about your business, you're not interesting to me as far as my camera is concerned. But at the same time, if I wanted to make a video about me walking down the street and show how beautiful Keene's downtown was or something like that, and somebody took an issue with that... I would not stop recording at that point because I was there for a different purpose. And then that person took an issue and then they made the made the video, which was just going to be a nice tour of downtown Keene, into a video about this a-hole who has a problem with me <laughs> recording. Yeah, this is a weird one. And this one's uh, particularly interesting for me because I record so much of my, my daily activities and then upload them. You call but, it like the Truman Show or yeah, something, right? Yeah, like, I say it's like the Truman Show for liberty. Right. But the, um, <laughs> the problem is that in a real libertarian uh, free society, there there would be property rights firmly defined, so it would be clear uh, who owns the property that I'm recording on. And so I wouldn't be on public property. There would be no uh, tragedy of the commons to dispute, like, you can't take my picture here. I would say, oh, really? Let's talk to the property owner. Mm -hmm. And then it would be very clear. The McDonald's well, or whoever would say, yeah, he's allowed to record. Well, there is, I mean, if, if you claim that the state's the property owner, and I think that there's a valid argument for the state being the, you know, at, at least th there's an understandable argument for the state being the property owner, the state's pretty clear. You can be recorded if you are out in public. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That doesn't stop people from getting upset, or in some cases getting violent. Uh, Derek J. was attacked. His camera was broken over just simply recording some video in a public place. And some people get really upset about it as though they own the, the photons that are coming into your camera lens, as though they should have some ability to control that when they're out in public. It's ridiculous. More coming up. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On Facebook, on the news, and in conversations with friends, we're bombarded every day with advice on how to be healthier, from gluten-free and non-GMO diets to how much exercise and sleep the body needs. But how much have you heard about alkalizing the body? AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are a holistic and natural way to get your body's pH levels back in balance. Just a few drops in water will help your body rid itself of harmful waste. And even the healthiest of diets can be complemented with your daily use of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Who isn't looking for more vibrance, vigor, and energy? Now buy two bottles of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops and get $10 off your order. Visit AlkaVision.com or call 800-518-7615. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds. Open the door to greater health, vitality, and zest for life. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health. Call 800-518-7615 or head to AlkaVision.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices, and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Some neighbors around here are very upset that we don't agree with the social contract. Uh, what happened earlier in the show, and I mentioned that Mark was getting out of his chair, is there's a certain character here who lives literally uh, three houses down the street. It uh, goes by the name Boston Strong. At least that's what uh, that we call him. And I think his friends call him Boston or something like that. Honestly, I don't really even know. But the guy doesn't, you know, he's not from around here originally. Like us, he's from Boston. Uh, and he's very upset. He's one of the members of uh, Stop Free Keen, which mm -hmm. is a group that has formed here in Keene, New Hampshire, to oppose uh, some of the liberty loving activists that have moved here. And so he just happens to live nearby the LRN studios. And every time he drives by the studio, he he yells at the top of his lungs, which could be heard pretty loud through uh, through the window here, Get a job! 
and that's all. It's the only line he's got. It's 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 always get a job. That's always the same line. Um, I have a job. I'm a talk show host, and I wish you'd shut up. While get I'm some yeah. variety. I'm doing my job. Stop. <laughs> Stop bothering us. So um, so yeah, he he just yells this at the top of his lungs, and then he speeds down the street and he pulls in his driveway. And so apparently, what happened tonight was something a little bit different. Uh, those watching the cam feed over the break probably noticed Chris Cantwell uh, coming in. <laughs> And, of course, Chris Cantwell now lives across the street from the KAC, ChristopherCantwell.com, his website. And he happened to hear uh, Boston Strong yelling as he drove by. Which, by the way, it's just not a very neighborly thing to do. We're accused of being bad neighbors or something like that. But um, we keep the house pretty clean here and you know the yard is in decent shape. And um, nobody goes out in front of anyone else's na- uh, houses around here and shouts at them, but this guy does, and I guess he considers himself a good neighbor. Yeah, he's the good neighbor. Right. So uh, Chris Cantwell went out there and basically confronted this dude in front of his house. Hey, and, could you not yell? Yeah, uh, and apparently uh, there was a bit of a back and forth, and some of it got caught on video. So hopefully we're going to have that video up at some point. It, if it's worth it, it may get posted to Free Keen. Otherwise, uh, free, that's freekeen.com. Otherwise, it may just be on the, uh, the the raw channel. I like that people are working out their problems with words, you know, and mm-hmm. video cameras are adding an extra layer of accountability. You know, that it's a situation that could come to blows when people disagree. And well, this are, is an angry man. Yeah, he's you know. not going to come to blows with Cantwell. He had a revolver on his <laughs> Cantwell had a revolver on his hip. And people rarely <laughs> hit people with revolvers on their hip. hip <laughs> yeah. Hip, you know, I mean, I mean, it's just it's something you don't do. It's one of the advantages of the open carry thing. I'm not a big fan of open carry. I feel like, you know, if I want to have a gun, chances are good I don't want to be showing it to everybody and mm. making myself a target. But I can't I can't claim that there's not an advantage to it. But this actually ties into the discussion we've been having about the fear of cameras that some people have. This just angry uh, demeanor that people will uh, will bring upon, upon themselves if a camera is around in public and they get very offended as though you're somehow violating their rights. Uh, the idea, of course, from their, from their perspective being that they have a right to privacy when in public. It's the craziest thing, but it's also not an uncommon perspective, it seems. Uh, again, there's a video channel on YouTube where it's their thing. They just walk around uh, in public with a video camera until somebody gets mad and then they make a video out of it. Uh, so it's not uncommon, and the, this Boston Strong character is one of a, a, a fairly large group of people. Um, you know, you could argue there's more people in Stop Free Keen than there are in the activist community here uh, here in Keen, and these are people who are upset that uh, we don't like the status quo, and they're upset that we're challenging the status quo, and that we're loud about it, and that we're putting videos out showing the the people in the status quo to be hypocrites and violent and dangerous and threatening towards others because uh, they like things the way they are, and they don't like having somebody come around and, and upset the apple cart. And I mean, I guess I can kind of empathize with how frustrating it could be to have life in a certain way and have, you know, continue to expect that life will be a certain way and then have these rabble rousers come in and start to sort of throw, do things that are unusual, question things that had not been previously questioned, bring up topics that uh, could cause things to change. And I could see that that could be difficult for people. Yeah. But I'm not going to stop. It's a lot like that movie Pleasantville, like you've described, a or you've used like it. you've used the analogy um, to describe Keen in a way. And I think there are a lot of people who move to Keen for that sort of gelled life. <laughs> they just want things to stop and never innovate, never change. We well, just they like want their pattern. Plenty of innovation. Each one of these people wants things to that. change. I don't see that in the downtown where it's like everything must be brick and you we can't cannot have a building change more than three stories. Or then four how come their budget keeps colors. going up? How come the city government every single year keeps on oh wanting God. more and more money? Keep paying yeah. the bureaucrats and make their programs larger. But I, I know where Derek's coming from. Like when the there's a cell phone company that wanted to put a tower up no! on the hill. We can't have that. It'll destroy the view. Uh, no, it's fine, really. There's one tower there already. What's a second tower? How's that going to do anything? So, yeah, I mean, when you're out in the, the kind of the woods, you're likely going to get that provincial perspective uh, people frustrated with change but you probably get that in the city as well like people think that things are fine the way they are i don't know i guess so you're welcome to share your thoughts here at 855 450 free we can also continue discussing the ridiculous idea of the social contract uh, but some people would say that the existence of people like Boston Strong and the the other folks from Stop Free Keen. Oh, I don't think we mentioned this. Over the weekend, uh, related story. Uh, over the weekend, somebody came by here and stood out in front of the uh, the studio. 
Oh, yeah. What was that right about? Right on the corner. It was actually yesterday that this happened. I don't think you guys knew about it last night, Mark, so you probably didn't talk about this. Uh, but there was some some guy from Stop Free Keen who doesn't live around here. But he, How did you know he was from Stop Free Keen? Some, Are you just assuming? No, somebody took a screenshot of one of the posts in their group. They've got a Facebook group oh, where okay. they, they chit-chat about certain things. Now, I didn't know if it was going to be true or not, but the guy, the guy was claiming he was going to come over here and, and do, do something. Uh-oh. And he said to his wife, he claims he's told his wife to get the bail money ready. Oh, suggesting no. Suggesting that he didn't care what he was, you know, he didn't care what the police did, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, he he's comes rough o- and tough. He comes over at about three o'clock in the afternoon. We're you know, just a few people on the porch. I'm doing some stuff on my laptop, getting a little bit of work, kind of catching up on some emails, getting stuff done. And I look up and there's this guy standing there with his uh, his camera just standing there. Was he on the property or out the on corner. the street? He was at the corner, technically on property. He will teach property. you a lesson with that camera, those cameras of yours. Okay. Well, I was grateful that he didn't destroy any property or physically attack anyone. He did just stand there quietly with his uh, his cell phone holding that up. He stood there for at least 20, 25 minutes. Wow. Um, ultimately, a, a cr- small crowd of activists gathered on the porch to observe and question the man. Uh, an attempt to get him to speak and, you know, talk to us. What's your issue, man? I mean, is there some sort of concern that you have, something you're angry about? Uh, we'd be happy to talk to you about it. Of course, did he, he speak? No, he did not say one word the entire time <laughs> Weird. Uh, that he was standing. It's a very strange behavior. Like an alien landing. Like, I'm just here to observe you. And yeah. I won't answer any questions. I thought it was it was a very strange behavior. So ultimately, I off, you know, offered him uh, a drink, offered to get him some water. You know, it was kind of hot out. It was the uh-huh. afternoon. Uh, Chris Cantwell came outside as well, and he offered him some lemonade. He didn't seem to be interested in having any beverage. Also offered him some chalk because they had all, they had said in the Stop Free Keen thread that they were going to come out and chalk in front of the oh. KAC and the LRN Studios, which is where we are. And uh, that wouldn't be the first time. In fact, Boston Strong actually came out and chalked one morning at about 5 a.m. Um, so he was alone. We had thought that maybe there would be more than one person showing up, but unfortunately he was all, unfortunately for him, I guess, he was, he was all alone. Mm. So we offered him some chalk. He didn't take that. Were you trying Chris to be Kimwell. annoyingly neighborly? Chris- Were you trying to, like, irk him? Like, oh, you're here to... Uh, well, make us a- uncomfortable, so I'm going to be just oh so kind and gentle to you. I actually had previously thought if somebody ever comes and does a protest here, it would be a nice thing to offer them some cookies or something to drink or some you know be be neighborly and yeah. be nice. But I'll bet that's not what he expected. Uh, probably not. But in this case, uh, we offered him chalk. He passed on that. But I left the chalk there on the ground in case he wanted to you know later pick communicate it up. Communicate with oh chalk. Right. Just He's communicate something. No, right? speak them. Use them chalk. Um, and then Chris, <laughs> I think Chris came out then after a little bit. He brought out a poster board, a piece of poster board and a large black marker. And also his megaphone, and, wow. and even offered to him all of these tools so he like could Like a express. soapbox, too? I mean, he's yeah. given him every tool he could possibly use to communicate. Right, we, not wanted having him, it. we wanted him to express himself. What was he there for? What was his purpose? What, do we, what does he want to say to people? Get wow. a message out there. He didn't do it. Maybe he, he was just art. Off. He was living art for a, for a little while, and you just didn't get it. I, it certainly tr- it could be true. He took off, and, and that was it. So I thought that was kind of an interesting story. But people that are upset here, and they would say that you guys, uh, the critics would say, you guys and Keen, you're on the wrong track. You're doing everything wrong. Look at what ha- look at what's happened. You've got these people out in front of your house. You've got people yelling things at you. Uh, you've got property damage happening. I mean, clearly, you're bringing this all upon yourselves, and uh, you're clearly doing it wrong. Yeah, wouldn't it be easier to just pack up and go home? Don't you think that's what uh, everyone should do well, what for if, facing criticism? I, I don't know whether this is the right way to go about achieving more freedom in our lifetimes. Uh, what successes have you had? Oh, plenty of people have been moving here as a result of the activism that goes on in Keene. And I mean, when I say here, I mean across New Hampshire. People all across New Hampshire, a lot of them have uh, been turned on and inspired by things like Derek J's victimless crime spree and some of the other things that have happened here. We're coming up, 855, 450 free. You can tell your story. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Is gun ownership about target shooting, hunting, and self-defense, or is there more to it? 
Oath Keepers and Rayburn Entertainment present Molon Labe, inspired by the works of Edwin Vieira Jr., explains why we need to revitalize the state militia system. Featuring Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Larry Pratt, and Stuart Rhodes. Available on DVD at moviepubs.net, oathkeepers.org, and gunowners.org. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, September 15th, 2014. Silver is trading at $18.63 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,235 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $476. Antiwar.com reports, heavy fighting in the rebel capital of Donetsk put the ongoing eastern Ukraine ceasefire in serious jeopardy, with both sides claiming the other fired first. The move comes just a day after Ukrainian Premier Arseniy Yatsenyuk talked up the state of war between his nation and Russia. The ceasefire has more or less held since it was brokered by Russia, though it came to the chagrin of NATO and led to new rounds of sanctions against Russia for interfering in the country. Ukrainian Defense Minister Valery Heliti reported NATO is so eager to see the ceasefire collapse that they've started direct shipments of weapons under a sideline deal he claims was made at the Cardiff summit two weeks ago. Helity insisted, I have no right to disclose any specific country we reached that agreement with. Some NATO nations have denied any plans to provide lethal aid to Ukraine's military, though the alliance did publicly agree to some funding for them. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The AP reports, North Korea's Supreme Court on Sunday sentenced a 24-year-old American man to six years of hard labor for entering the country illegally to commit espionage. At a trial that lasted about 90 minutes, the court said Matthew Miller tore up his tourist visa at Pyongyang's airport upon arrival on April 10th and admitting to having the wild ambition of experiencing prison life so that he could secretly investigate North Korea's human rights situation. Miller, who looked thin and pale at trial and was dressed completely in black is one of three Americans now being held in North Korea. Showing no emotion throughout the proceedings, Miller waived his rights to a lawyer and was handcuffed before being led from the courtroom after his sentencing. The court, comprising a chief judge flanked by two people's assessors, ruled it would not hear any appeals to its decision. Earlier, it had been believed that Miller had sought asylum when he entered North Korea. During the trial, however, the prosecution argued that was a ruse and that Miller also falsely claimed to have secret information about the U.S. military in South Korea on his iPad and iPod. Miller was charged under Article 64 of the North Korean Criminal Code, which is for espionage and can carry a sentence of 5 to 10 years, though harsher punishments can be given for more serious cases. During a brief interview with the Associated Press in Pyongyang last week, Miller said he had written a letter to President 
Barack Obama, but had not received a reply. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, less than 24 hours after Prime Minister Haider Abadi ordered the military to halt airstrikes against civilian areas, the Iraqi military fired multiple missiles at a hospital in Fallujah, badly injuring a staff member and causing damage to the building. Fallujah was the first major city ISIS took all the way back in January, and the city's hospital has repeatedly been targeted by the Iraqi military, causing civilian casualties. Abadi's ban on such targeting was meant to meet a demand of Sunni tribal leaders in the region who have offered to back Iraq in retaking the areas from ISIS, and the latest attacks probably throw serious doubt into that. It also adds to unwelcome attention for Iraq's major human rights violations in the ISIS war. Human Rights Watch is calling for an investigation into a recent Iraqi airstrike against a school in Al-Alam, north of Tikrit. The strike killed 31 civilians, including 24 children, and the school has been used to shelter civilian refugees as the fighting in the area escalates. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Sources within the Vatican confirmed Tuesday that Pope Benedict XVI has dispatched an elite team of six bishops to sabotage leading contraceptive manufacturer Pfizer. Codenamed Conclave 6, the highly trained team of bishops will reportedly infiltrate the heavily guarded compound, detonate extremely powerful charges at key points within the factory, and then escape to a nearby safe house. The Catholic Church can trust only the best with defending God's plan. Conclave 6 is the deadliest team of bishops I've ever laid out. On. The Pope denied rumors that a B-team of needle-wielding priests had been deployed to a latex factory in New Jersey to poke tiny holes into thousands of Durex condoms. Locally, the best part of a gay 12-year-old's day is the half hour he spends eating lunch alone in a stairwell. Calling it his only respite from constant ridicule and mockery, 7th grader Ben McElroy says life doesn't get better than the moments he spends quietly laying out his lunch on a secluded staircase while the rest of his classmates are in the cafeteria. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, launching into the third hour of the program. You can take control, toll-free here. And if you've signed the social contract, we would love to know what the terms are. Give us a call and let us know, because nobody in this studio has ever seen it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But from what we can discern, the terms are actually fairly simple. Uh, they are, you do as we say, we being the people calling themselves the state or city. The administers of the social town. contract. Uh, you do as we say, or else we do whatever we want to you. That's pretty much how it works, as I understand it. I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, so you can share your thoughts here. We still haven't gone through the full piece on the contract here from CaseyResearch.com, where Paul Rosenberg is saying that it is a fraud and anyone enforcing it is acting criminally. Because, first of all, it's not a contract, and he's kind of going through the different aspects of contracts and why it is a social contract, this supposed agreement between you and the government. Uh, that there's no evidence actually exists, why it's not actually in point of fact a contract, that it's, uh, you have to be competent in order to sign a contract. And the claim about the social contract is you've been subject to it since birth. So clearly you weren't competent to engage in or to enter in the contract. I never learned about this before delving into like libertarian theory. Why, where do people learn about the social contract to start with? Is this Probably a class college. I missed in school or something? No, I'm sure that I had it mentioned in high school, but I'll bet you college is where it really gets... Uh, there was like a time when the teacher put on the board, okay, social contract. I don't Here's remember the, that either. It didn't no. come across my uh, purview until I started doing things that the people in the state didn't like. And then at some point someone told me that there's a social contract yeah, that justifies that's, it. That's sort of how it came up. And I wonder how everyone got on the same page about this thing, if there's no like class about it. Or well, anything. it's more of like an excuse that the intellectuals can use once someone starts to think for themselves. Oh, oh it's a social contract. You just you, don't understand. You can't step out of line. You're contracted to behave. 
Yeah. Whereas most people will behave because they've been, you know, doing the Pledge of Allegiance obediently, told to do what the police say, and, you know, all this time they've been inside the government indoctrination system. So most people aren't trouble. They're not a problem, and they don't even have to be told about the social contract. They're just obedient enough to where they don't need to know about the idea. So, but it seems to stem from academia, though. This is where it gets most of its justification. It's not I think like, so. Okay. All right. So let me continue here with the uh, story from CaseyResearch.com. And again, you're welcome to comment toll free at 855 450 free or via Skype. Skype username here is lrn.fm. So it fails on the competence point in that children purportedly cannot contract. And so, therefore, if you're an infant and you're purportedly getting into the social contract, then that doesn't make sense. Uh, it's also not a voluntary agreement because contracts must be agreed to. The social contract fails on this point as well, considering you are entering into it uh, under duress. And that's in the next point, that a contract must be agreed to without duress, that is, without the threat of harm. The standard objection to my agreement point above is that people agree to the social contract by their actions. If you use anything provided by a government, you are automatically agreeing to the entire social contract. This line of argument fails in several ways. Entrapment, for starters, following by being informed. But the largest issue in my mind is that of duress. To get out of the social contract, we are told, we must leave the ruler's territory. That places the ruler's rights above our own as a starting point, which voids any semblance of equal justice. But I'll pass up that discussion for today. Leaving the ruler's territory means spending large amounts of money, a tremendous amount of time to make arrangements, leaving our jobs behind, leaving all our friends behind, and leaving our entire families behind. And they don't always give you permission to do it. That's true. If you can afford the, the leaving fee, you're stuck. In other words, we can only escape the social contract. The, the social contract sounds a lot like um, a safety dance uh, because you have to leave your friends behind. <laughs> In other words, we can only escape the social contract by undertaking difficult, expensive, and heartbreaking actions. Imagine a fuller brush salesman coming to your door and offering you an assortment of brushes for $30. Then, when you politely decline, he pulls out a gun and says, No! If you don't want the deal, you have to abandon your house. Either pay me or leave. And this is really what goes on. So there are all kinds of schools in your town, your municipality. Many of those schools ask for volu ask you to voluntarily uh, send your kid there or to attend there or whatever. And a few of them say, if you don't fund us, we will take your house away. This is exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. Now, I, you know, you can claim that the government, ha that, that we the people have an obligation to the children if that's what you wish. However, what you can't claim is you'd be hard-pressed to claim that the public school system's a good system for administering that. Mm. If you want a means-based, by that I mean, you know, you want poor people, a means-based scholarship program, let's talk about a means-based scholarship program. Don't talk to me about middle-class uh, gov government welfare babysitting services mm -hmm. that we call public schools. Is the salesman's demand criminal in this case? Yes. If so, the social contract is criminal as well. Both seek to secure agreements by using duress. Verdict. The social contract fails both legally and on the grounds of cruelty. Next point. Undue influence. Undue influence involves one person taking advantage of a position of power over another person. Yep. Clearly, this applies to the social contract. First, we are compelled to attend schools run by the other party to the contract. These institutions teach us that the social contract is the way of the world and that any competing ideas would be crazy. And we are held in their classrooms five or more hours per day, more like eight hours when I went to school, <laughs> uh, beginning at five years old and running until adulthood. If nothing else, consider the daily Pledge of Allegiance and try to count the number of times you were made to recite it. On top of that, the other party employs legions of armed men and authorizes them to violently subdue those who oppose them and their rules. If these things are not undue influence, then nothing is. You can't indoctrinate the other party, hold a sword to his throat, force him to sign, and still call it a contract. Verdict, the social contract fails here as well. And finally, Mutuality of obligation. With no mutuality of obligation, there can be no contract. If the other side of this the contract is, your favorite part, isn't it? is not meeting their obligations, there must be recourse. After the U.S. government failed to protect New Yorkers on 9-11, all 8 million of them should have been entitled to a refund. Clearly, the other side of the deal failed to meet their obligations. That, of course, didn't happen. The loss of their rights only got worse. 
And then we have the doctrine of sovereign immunity, which removes all the most serious consequences from the other side of the deal. There is no mutuality of obligation in the social contract. Therefore, it's not a contract, meaning that you're obligated to do everything they say, but they're not even keeping their side of the so-called bargain with the whole we're going to protect you thing. Like, because that's supposedly the deal is they're going to protect you in return for you doing what they say. So what do you get? What what do they You get whatever offer. they feel like giving you at any given moment. And they will do certain things in order sure. to maintain the appearance of legitimacy. That's why right. the police will arrest some people from time to time for actually committing crimes. I mean, the you know, they, they're out there. They want people to think that there's legitimacy to this. They take over legitimate services offered by that were that are offered in the marketplace at some point and like the they, roads well the, the roads or are catching great murderers one. that's a mm-hmm. that's an important well, one well roads were originally owned privately um here in the united states i mean that was the way it was people made roads and charged tolls for yeah, them yes subways too subways did a great yep. job uh, a- privately absolutely garbage pickup services i'm sure that they had pri- i i know they had car- private garbage pickup services mm-hmm. that got uh, socialized as it were um you know power uh, delivery for the common good, Mark. All these things. Right, so they take these things over. And then they say, look, see, we're magnanimous. Now, of course, they tend to charge more. They tend to give worse customer service. <laughs> but it's been done this way for so long that they say, well, what about the roads? Sure. You know, they, they say, look, without us, you wouldn't have these things that they took from the private market in the first place. Charities, too, because now many people feel that they have given everything they need to give to charity simply because they pay their taxes. Mm. And uh, this is dangerous. A, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's ludicrous. I mean, obviously. There's poor people all over the place. Well, well it's right. not just that. It's that uh, the money that they would be giving, they're giving so much more money to government and it's being wasted if they oh, would just withhold absolutely. it and give well, it to those well, charities. That's they'd be the doing truth much better. Of, of any organization that's run privately over a p- public organization is, is it's going to be more efficient. Mm-hmm. Well, the aura of legitimacy is so effective. Uh, they've got the government schools that indoctrinate, as this article points out. They've so. got parades. They've got parades. They've got yeah. uh, all kinds of things that you know in, that indoctrinate people. Songs. But also, yeah. they've got decades as well. well. I'd and like to point out that I'm a fireman, so I see a lot of news stuff. Oh, the, you get parades too. The, the stuff goes by in the Facebook feed of the firemen, right? And some firemen died recently. And you know, I know that these guys do go into harm's way. There's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. But they're doing their job. They get paid reasonably well. They get 20 years to retirement. And uh, look. Nobody has a parade for advertising executives yeah. or cameramen or talk show hosts when they get killed in the line of duty. Let's come back with more with your thoughts. Welcome here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. A powerful weight loss supplement is being given out to listeners in this area on a strict first-come, first-served basis. You must be between the ages of 25 and 65 and need to lose at least 30 pounds. Please call now only if you qualify. 1-800-409-5432. This product can cause dramatic weight loss, so supplies are limited. It's called Final Trim. Take two capsules just once a day as directed, and you can experience maximum weight loss. Pounds in days. It uses natural ingredients, making it healthy and safe. If your weight loss with Final Trim is too dramatic, please decrease use and only take one capsule a day. Call now and you will be given a full-size supply of Final Trim to use absolutely risk-free. Repeat, Final Trim is being given out to listeners on a strict first-come, first-served basis. Supplies are limited. Call 1-800-409-5432. 1-800-409-5432. That toll-free number again is 1-800-409-5432. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. 
Did you agree? Did you totally agree? I'll bet that you did. But did you read the agreement? There are 7 billion people on Earth, and there are over 6 billion active cell phone accounts right now. And every one of them came with an agreement. Billions have already agreed to allow entities that they do not know to use and abuse every feature of their mobile devices. Your computer activity is monitored and archived. Your car is tracked, and even your face is scanned. The current power structure grows more fearful every day of your desire for anonymity, independence, free association, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, and your freedom of thought. And entire categories of humans will be targeted. And if they, them, those that won't leave us alone, determine that we are not within their control, then we will be categorized as out of control. FreedomsPhoenix.com will launch the next phase of the Levolution by the end of the summer of 2014. And if you have to tell your neighbors about it, then we did it wrong. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live here to take your calls about whatever's on your mind. You don't have to talk about the social contract nonsense to get on the air with us. Also discussing the aura of legitimacy that the government people are so, so concerned about protecting. That's one of the reasons why activists like Derek Jay and myself, who sort of openly challenge the system in a lot of different ways, civil disobedience, non-cooperation, that's very threatening to the authority of the people calling themselves the state. And that's why that, you know, we'll get punished a lot harsher in some cases than even certain violent criminals uh, will. The toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Join us on Skype. Skype username is LRN.FM. My Magic Mud, what is it? It is a tooth polishing powder. Um, I it, It's basically you can use it in lieu of toothpaste. Now, I don't use it every application by any stretch, and the instructions don't, don't require you to. Um, it is about um, 150 50 applications for about 25 bucks per little jar or tub or whatever you want to call it. And it does a great job of polishing your teeth, removing stains, uh, grabbing that bacteria, pulling it out of there. My mouth has never felt as clean as it does with my magic mud. Derek, you I've been using it. Yep, yep. Looking good. Yep. Teeth look great. As a matter of fact, you can go to see what uh, biological dentist Dr. Griffin Cole has to say about it as he explains a lot of the benefits of My Magic Mud at MyMagicMud.com. It also reverses sensitivity in many people who have uh, sensitive teeth and pain that you might be dealing with. It doesn't have a taste if you're sensitive to sort of taste. It was created by Jessica Armand, and she's a liberty-loving homeschool mother of three. It's a great product. I'm never going to be without it again. It's awesome. MyMagicMud.com. All right, so let's continue here. Uh, We were talking about the aura of legitimacy and how important it is to the state to protect this thing. Uh, The social contract's kind of tied in here as well, the idea that this is somehow legitimate, uh, where they get to make up all the rules and you have to follow them or else you'll get thrown in a cage or possibly shot uh, or worse. And one of the things that they are so effective at, and one of the reasons why their legitimacy is so uh, firm, is they've been at it for a long time. I mean, this whole state thing is an idea that's been around for many hundreds of years. And in the case of the United States, that particular idea of the state has been around for a couple hundred plus uh, years at this point. And so they've got a lot of time on their side. And so when we, the activist types, uh, go out there and challenge 
people's preconceived notions about what the state is and you know what is really happening. For instance, just look at parking enforcement. Uh, the common objection is that it's all starting from zero. That me going out there and uh, following around a parking enforcer and putting coins in the the meters. And then the parking enforcer getting upset about it and freaking out, as she recently did on a video, and then we can play that here in a little bit if we get a chance. But the parking enforcer flipping out, they look at they look at the parking enforcer and they they empathize with her and they sure. say they say to themselves, well, gosh, if I was at my job and there was some guy following me around with a video camera asking me questions, I wouldn't like that very much. And yeah, so, what a jerk! Right. So I can understand uh, this person is thinking I can totally empathize with this woman and why she's feeling that way. She's just there doing her job. She's just trying to make a living she's making a she's making an honest living she's just doing her job yeah and shouldn't you be following the golden rule by treating others the way they want to be uh, you would want to be treated you wouldn't want to be treated that way you wouldn't want to be followed around with a video camera and harassed indeed so their perspective all starts from like the, as though everything is just fine normally they don't see the parking enforcer as being a enforcer as mm -hmm. being somebody whose job it is <laughs> to go around and threaten people they don't see the tickets as a as a threat even though many people feel uh, terribly when they receive one. Right, and these tickets, I think that that's the biggest thing that, uh, you know, they call them fines. They're associated with having done something bad or mm -hmm. wrong. But these are the people that are doing the bad, wrong thing. If these there's meaning the parking enforcers? Indeed, if there's two empty spaces on either side of you, mm -hmm. suggesting the parking, the, the reason that they claim this whole parking thing's there is to Turn A. Over. Right. It, well, is to A, sort of get, uh, make sure that there's enough spaces for everybody, and B, keeping keeping the people that live on Main Street from parking where they shouldn't be parking, mm -hmm. which essentially is then again trying to keep the spaces open for people. And if, if you're wanting that, then why would you disincentivize uh, somebody from parking downtown by giving them a ticket when there's two spaces on either side of them? Because it's revenue. It's because it's, it's revenue. I, th I thought it was revealing in the video that uh, the young lady who stands up for the parking enforcer says she's just doing her job yep. to you, and you, you point out that her job is stealing cars from people, and she gets really confused at that. Like ultimately, what? that's what. And, and I, pro I probably could have better uh, communicated in that case, but you know, I'm, I'm literally. But you had to be brief, right? I'm literally running, trying to fill meters, and also trying to record at the same time. So the videography isn't the greatest in this particular video. It's hard to do all of those things at once. Yeah, but I thought it was it was great that you at least pointed that out yeah, because it, it made her think, uh, you know, she she was just taking the parking enforcer's side, not really thinking about the issue, but then when it was brought up that this person steals cars, like, well, yeah, maybe that is wrong. It's sort of like how we were talking about the other day uh, about 9-11 and how a lot of Americans believe that uh, it all began on 9-11, that there was nothing that precipitated the attacks that happened on 9-11, that it oh, well, wait, they don't even know about the U.S. government's meddling in Middle Eastern countries for decades uh, prior to that. Like, that wasn't a factor. It's just... They well, never <laughs> heard of the Iranian passenger jet that was shot down by U.S. Uh, warships right. without an apology, mind you, where hundreds of people were killed by the United States government, hundreds of innocent civilians killed in like 1989 or 1887 or 88 or something like that, and no apology was issued. I wonder if there's any animosity from the Iranian people over that. So it's kind of similar to this viewpoint that some people have about parking enforcement or the police or whatever. I'm only using parking enforcement because it's recent and it's fresh. It's happened mm -hmm. here. Um, but the idea being that, oh, well, our perspective here on Free Talk Live is that the government doesn't legitimately own anything. And I don't want to put words in you guys mouth so please you know correct me if i'm not speaking for you in this case but a, a thief cannot own the bicycle that he steals I right like, well so I, therefore i think the governments can own things i would however claim that a government that takes things by force is a thief and thieves don't legitimately own the things that they own so what right. you're talking about mark is the theoretical future government you'd like to see that doesn't use the coercive force i don't on know that people. it's necessarily futuristic i think that insurance companies it doesn't exist today though i think insurance companies could be called government agencies because they govern they, they create a relationship that they then govern over huh. um so i like that that's interesting i think that we do have voluntary governments that we that protect us in many ways that the government doesn't and watch out by the way uh, they don't like it when somebody else claims to protect you so mm -hmm. they're liable to take that over and nationalize it all mm -hmm. right okay so i guess i should use the term the state uh then for this this conversation right because the state as we know it has always used violence to attain its ends and 
Well, I'm I'm curious why that point isn't driven home more often. Everybody knows that the state didn't acquire its property justly. You I know, don't know kick, if they know that. Everybody knows about the pilgrims and the Indians and, you know, the, the smallpox blankets. And I don't think they care. Everybody knows that the, the North American land was not acquired justly. That it was not a true, fair trade. But they don't care about it. They assume that it's ju- it's legitimate now, now that as many years have gone past. Well, why? Because time has passed? Yeah. So that's a reason? That's what I'm saying. The, the state has time on its side. <laughs> it's and they baloney. Have, they have decades of obedience and yes, decades and generations upon generations of obedience. And so that's what they're going on here. So when we point out the illegitimacy and the the wrongfulness of the enforcement division and what they're doing and stealing and threatening people, they just see it as legitimate. Their their viewpoint is, well, you broke the rules. If you didn't want your car stolen, you should have paid the fee. You should have paid for the the ticket. Doesn't matter if they're stealing poor people's cars, single single mothers. It doesn't matter. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. We've been patiently waiting, waiting while you tried to ignore us, waiting while you acted like we didn't exist, waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio, now at your fingertips. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. We're here to take your phone calls if you dial in toll-free and join us, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us via Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Your comments are welcome, whether it's about the supposed social contract, the legitimacy of government, uh, whether or not you know what they have was acquired legitimately, and so therefore do they have legitimate control over it, say, like, for instance, the parking spaces in downtown, wherever you happen to live. Um, by the way, if you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get that extra edge when it counts, look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students are using this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall, so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. At modup.net, they make it affordable for you to take advantage of the benefits of modafinil by being 80 to 85 percent lower in price than the brand name but don't mistake low prices for inferior quality they ensure that purity and potency are consistent to that of the branded version now remember and this is important free talk live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide it's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply modup.net by the way gives you a great discount if you pay with bitcoin they've already got great prices but you lop off another 33 percent when you pay with bitcoin at modup.net m-o-d-u-p.net use code ftl on top of that and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order so don't forget code ftl for world-class service at a great price for modafinil it's modup m-o-d-u-p modup.net as we go to the phones here chris is listening in florida to lrn.fm hey chris Hey, how's it going? What's on your mind tonight? Oh, uh, I just wanted to carry over from what what you guys were previously discussing before a commercial break. Sure. And uh, and uh, elaborating on that a little bit uh, as far as like whenever uh, um, we came over and we uh, stole the land from the actual Indians over here. Now, Prior I for one that, was not had... stealing land from Indians, and I no, I don't no, know no, if no, you no, were, no, but I wasn't. I wasn't. Okay. But uh, I. Anyways, uh, some prior people. to that, some people stole yeah. land from Indians. Yeah, well, it was uh, the wealthy aristocrats that came over here for the king to rape and pillage the land. Right. You know? But uh, anyways, uh, uh, prior to um, England coming over here, they had a king, and um, and whenever they actually forced him by force, you know, either you sign this Magna Carta. Or you die. That's how our legal system actually got founded. Was by, by straight up force. And uh, really, I didn't know that know. about the Magna Carta. It was signed under duress. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Please, oh, this guy had the rule. Of, the God told him he was in charge. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, and uh, and the way that I, I look at it is, uh, you know, you got the the king, right? You know. And, uh, you know, it's only it only follows one guy, you know, the entire time. But the rest of the family, they are just as wealthy as they are. And uh, my thoughts are, as the wealthy aristocrats, they were like, well, this is bullshit. You oh, know? you can't say that on so, the radio. Thanks for the call. Appreciate hearing from you. I understand that uh, he was pretty, uh, you know, interested in the topic and passionate about it and said that uh, the family said this was bs but i don't know where else he was going to go with that statement it's a shame too gotta remember you're calling a radio show i understand you're listening online but uh, we're doing talk radio and we're on uh, dozens of radio stations over 160 total across the entire week and unfortunately that means we've got to play ball by the fcc's rules i don't like it but that's the way it is yeah but it sounds like he was saying uh that under kingdoms the people who live under the kingdom uh, don't pay as much attention to the royal families as they do the king. And the, yet they have just as much power. Yeah, they've got influence. They're doing stuff behind the scenes. They're shady. So share your thoughts without saying S or F. 
and uh, we'll keep you on the air. Toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. Well, this, now I, th- I think that the the whole the government stole the land thing can be useful in a conversation about freedom, but I don't think it's the end all be all of a conversation about freedom. I was mm-hmm. uh, reading today, and I can't remember precisely what it is, but our listeners were telling me about this. Uh, apparently, there's some kind of French colony up near New Brunswick, near um, uh, Nova Scotia, mm-hmm. and yeah. it's like Saint. Pietro, P- Pierre's St. Pierre, I think, or something like that. I saw that conversation. It was on the the Amplifier Group, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's what, you know, when I was reading about this, this island, although it did have Aboriginal uh, people in it, um, at, at one point, there weren't they weren't there when, um, you know, the French might have landed. Now, this place, uh, this uh, St. Pierre or wherever, I, I'm trying to look it up as I- St. Pierre and McKellen? Yeah, that sounds right. Thanks for- okay. Uh, thanks for covering that for me, as I couldn't remember exactly. There was nobody there. Now, France lays claim to this, and there was a lot of battling back and forth between England and France. You can imagine England didn't like uh, you know, this tiny little piece of France sitting off of its the mm-hmm. coast of Canada, right? <laughs> um, and obviously, you know, Quebec was was lost to them, but French France kept France France kept that. How and about that? You gotta ask yourself, it's not like it was, you know, nobody was there. Is it legitimately the French government's? Well, no, because uh, the government exists based on coercion in the first place. Every dollar a government has, for the most part, unless we're talking about them being donated something by someone, for the most part was uh, gained under coercive force. So you're saying that the bullets that they defended that piece of land with it from another government at some point, um, since the money for those bullets was stolen, that therefore that land isn't theirs? I don't believe the government or the state or whatever you want to call them, I don't believe the state owns anything legitimate. Legitimately at all, ever, because from because they've always been using force on people and well, using the threat of violence against people. Now consider for a second that you're talking about, say, a homeowners association with a condominium. They may have the democratic system to solve problems, right? Fifty-one percent of people in this homeowners association say no garden gnomes. <laughs> and then there's no garden gnomes, right? Like that's a decision that they made, the yeah. decision that you opted into to some extent. If you, for instance, um, owned a piece of property that was, uh, you know, given to you by your parents, you'd still be obligated to the rules of the homeowners association. Mm. So you may not have actually bought in so much as you inherited in, mm. and you'd still be able to. They'd you can be- always sell the property. Yeah, you can always move, Mama Jamma. Mm-hmm. Um, you can move to a place where we don't, where they do things differently. Of course, on this planet, they don't do things differently. Just about everybody has the state, which is a group of people that tell you what to do. There may be different ways of choosing that state, but it's all pretty much the same. But do you understand? Like, you, what you if need a bunch to of guys. To, to, so back to the island point. Okay, if a bunch of guys go and steal money and pillage and rape, and they they take the spoils of the war, and then they go and buy a plot of land with that stolen money, then no, the plot of land is not owned legitimately. No. If they go to the uh, to the island with a boat and they sink a flag into the uh, the island, if the boat was paid for by stolen money, then no, it was not legitimate. But, okay, so let me argue against that too. How long? Of a period of time after the land was stolen, does it become theirs? Does Never. it not become theirs? Okay, Never. right now, but, the, what, but the, do you understand the, the land that you does own, not legitimately own those parking spaces? I hear what you're saying, I, and it's not that I disagree or agree, but I don't think that you have a very good argument. And here's the reason: because um, you know this land right here. What about the Micmacs? What about the um, the Abenaki? What about the Iroquois? Do, don't some of them have a claim to this land? How come you can claim the land upon which you have your house and studio is yours when at some point or another it belonged to, you know, it was the, the hunting range of I think of Derek some- already answered that question. That is that I purchased it without the use of violence. But I you purchased, purchased it, it from coercion. somebody who didn't own it because it was stolen. Well, at some point, it has to. Somebody has to own something, right? Okay, so let's say for a second, everybody on the this island of what is it, Saint Pierre? It's Saint Pierre and Malakin. Okay, um, M- McKellen. Okay, so everybody they they take a vote and they say, all right, we want to stay in. We want to stay with France. Mm-hmm. At that point, does that the, does all the land become theirs? Uh, was it a unanimous vote? This has to be unanimous now. Well, yeah, consent matters. But you can leave. 
I don't understand your point. Well, we I, had just talked about um, you know uh, housing uh, homeowners associations, and you said you can leave if you don't like the rules. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm asking, does it is it legitimate if they vote to stay with France? Because essentially every day they do. There's more coming up here in moments. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. What's your answer? Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. My name's Bruno. I'm 52 years old. I've tried different protein powders over the years, and they've all tasted pretty bad. I tried One World Way and found it to be delicious. After 10 weeks on One World Way, my wife commented, you have more muscles and you're leaner than when you were 20 years old. My body has changed dramatically. I'm a cyclist. Normally, I'll ride two days on and take two days off. After being on One World Way, I rode 10 days in a row in over 100 degree heat, and then I take another two servings of One World Way and then work out at the gym for another hour and a half. I just couldn't believe these results. My normal muscle tightness and soreness after working out are virtually gone. Don't take my word for it. One World Way comes in single serving. Just give it a try. One World Way is derived from Amish, grass-pastured cows and is newly reformulated to be higher in protein. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me... Government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live here. We'll take your calls. 855-450-FREE. Joining you tonight is Ian. Derek J. And Mark. That toll-free number again is 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. If you like the show, then please support Free Talk Live 
by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. It will cost you all of five bucks a month, and you get perks like access to the Amp Only call in lines, the Amp Only podcast, the Amp Only Facebook group, which is where that discussion about the uh, apparently little pieces of France actually in North America, a couple different islands, was it? Were they islands, both of them? Um, yeah, they're that? islands off the coast of uh, you know, British New Columbia. Brunswick. Yeah, New Brunswick. Yeah, so I learned something British new. Columbia. That's what they say in the chat room. I don't think so. I think it's on the other side of the uh, continent. Oh, okay. St. Pierre and Michelin. So uh, that was being discussed in the AMP Facebook group. And you could be a part of that. Just join the AMP program at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can use any major credit card through PayPal or use Visa or MasterCard right there on the AMP site. And you get all those perks. And it helps us, too, because we take that 5 bucks in and invest it into the show, getting on more radio stations around the country and bringing more listeners to the ideas of freedom, which sometimes we're not really too sure about. Like the discussion, uh, the discussion we're having here tonight about when does property become legitimately owned if it was illegitimately owned or take you know stolen or you know people were killed over it or something like that in the past. And it's it's tough to really answer that question. No, no, I figured it out. Okay, I've got good. it. So if my land that I currently own was once owned by Iroquois Indian or something, let's say, mm -hmm. and uh, ancestors, someone along the line stole it, and it was illegitimately acquired. But I consider myself to legitimately own it now. So I have to, in order to make that claim and be serious about it, I have to open up my property to those Iroquois Indian or whoever Abenaki originally likely. owned the property and say... It's yours. If Come they were and take still it. around to Come take it. Come and take it, or the ancestors of the Iroquois. If they, if now, why would still the around. ancestors have a legitimate claim to it? Well, because uh, presumably it would still be theirs. It would be just passed along the ages. So mm. I b extend an open invitation to inhabit my property now. Mm -hmm. And if it's not taken up, if they, in other words, if they say, no thanks, we'll pass, now I can finally say, yes, I legitimately own this, and from here on out... This is is my property and it's legitimately acquired. I can pass it. Yeah, along but how to do you put person. out that? How do you effectively put out notice to all of the uh, Iroquois ancestors? Smoke signals. <laughs> <laughs> and how do they? Um, how do you know that they're in fact uh, Abenaki Indians? I'm not going to go with this Iroquois thing. Just how not going to do that. It? How do they um, prove their claim? Yeah. How do they prove their the claim? Title? At this point. There's no recognized Abenakis. They basically were wiped out. Um, it's a bunch of white people that get together trying to well, get government aid. Also, I don't think you guys were having this conversation on the air. Uh, there was a conversation going on during one of the breaks mm -hmm. where Mark was talking about a prison story uh, where a guy got a watch that you had at one, hand, uh, at, at one time had, Mark, in, in the prison which you were in uh, for a number of years, you had this watch. It got lost. All of a sudden, it showed up on another guy. You you confronted him about yeah, it. Yeah, hey, what's up with my watch? He claimed he bought it legitimately from somebody else and claimed he didn't know it was stolen. Now, the uh, there's, a, there's a charge. There's a criminal charge out there in a lot of jurisdictions called receiving stolen property. And in order to be convicted of receiving stolen property, you had to know that the property was stolen. Mm -hmm. right? So if you didn't know that it was stolen, then it's a legitimate from your perspective, is a legitimate transaction. If, yeah. if the person tells you before you buy it, hey, this I got at the Five Finger Discount Store, or it fell off the back of a truck, or says something that indicates that it was stolen, then you should be aware that you shouldn't buy that piece of property because it's not actually legitimately for sale. It was stolen. So maybe you could make the argument, I'm not saying I'm real firm on this or anything, but maybe you could make the argument that in the case of the French Islands or the stolen land for the Indians, that the first person who bought it that didn't know that it was le that it was illegitimately acquired, the first person who acquired it that acquired it through what they believe to be a legitimate transaction, that maybe they are the new legitimate owner of it. Maybe. I think I, that's the best we got. I think it is. Uh, this is why I don't like to have the conversation too much about, um, hey, look, the government doesn't have any legitimacy because it doesn't really own the land. It's better to ask questions than it is to make statements. So what you do mm -hmm. is, is you, you ask a question. Are you claiming that the government owns all the land? Because I thought I owned my land. So you saying I don't own my land? And then you put them in a position of explaining what land ownership mm -hmm. is. And that's much more confusing. It's like, well, yes, the government, because 
people don't really know what they think about the government's ownership of land. They've never really thought about right. it. Right. They don't realize that in fact the government doesn't that the government does own your land and you just rent it. Yeah, that's because a good if point. you stop paying property taxes, they will take it from you. That's the position of a renter, not a position of an owner. And then they realize Oh, my goodness gracious, I am a serf, because that's the <laughs> definition of a serf. Okay, yeah, so that's a great point. Asking questions is really powerful. Uh, that's where you go. Also, then you can – now, look, I'm not trying to destor- destroy the social order here, but I do want to – I kind of am of the opinion that, you know, we progress – but that states are monopolies, and monopolies don't like progress. They never like progress because it takes power from them. Monopolies possess the power. Look, two or three hundred years ago, people in New England didn't think that people of different religions could live near each other. They'd kill them. They'd torture them. They'd do all kinds of things. But now in New England, people of different religions do live near each other. Well, I would propose... And this is my humble proposition, is that people with different governments can live near each other. That governments are simply organizations that are there to protect you. And that I can have a different protection agency than the person across the street. That we don't need an organization that claims monopoly privilege over a, over the use of violence in a given landmass in order to have protection. Let's go to Justin. He's in Minneapolis listening via TuneIn. Hello, Justin. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my call Go here. Um, I was kind of addressing the uh, the property issue uh, that you guys were just speaking about. Go for it. And while the the um, the ownership of the land itself may be in contention, and of course any funds that the government may generate from taxes also in contention under the idea that they're taking them by force as well. But the premise that I'm going with is that the government contracted the road to be built and paid for that so the parking spots that are on the said road would then be under their purview but the money that they paid for the roads was stolen right uh barring that discussion stemming off in the 20 minute tirade that we just had about does anybody actually own anything um, just as um, you just said, you may not own it from the Iroquois or the the other one, whichever you said it was. Barring that being Stockholm syndrome or direct force paying all taxes in general, they contracted the roads. The person that built them may or may not be under the impression that that was stolen money. Due but to the lack person of who built the roads they, doesn't own the roads after the fact. It's still the, the people calling themselves the state who claim ownership over those roads. So the fact that, you know, if a criminal gang comes in and robs a bank and then goes out and hires, you know, uses the money that they uh, got from the, the stole, you know, the stolen money from the bank to build something, uh, then it doesn't matter whether the builder thought that the money was acquired legitimately. The gang still has control over that thing. In this case, the parking spaces are still controlled by the gang. They've never changed hands into an owner that actually believes that they were legitimately purchased. And I don't think that... Th- this is where on this, I don't think you're going to solve anything when it comes to messing with the meter maids other than getting people who want to mess with meter maids to move here. And that is a goal of yours. And so, therefore, I think it's— I just want people who are you know brave enough to stand up for what they believe in. To it's all fine. Hamster. You're using it as a recruiting tool. And I think yeah. that's—the the fact is, is that, you know, these uh, parking enforcers sign a contract that says, yes, I will be a parking enforcer, and it's okay for people to, you know, cuss at me and stuff. Because it's this true. is a reality with their job. Now, none of you guys cuss at them, hopefully, but you do hold them accountable with cameras. So I don't think you really intend to see any big changes around parking in Keene, do you? Oh, I'd like to see the parking enforcement bureaucracy go away entirely. And I thank you, Justin, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to James in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live, James. Anybody that knows history, with the exception of people that are highly influenced by people that call themselves ministers, Derek Jay, there's no such thing as small packs, smallpox blankets. That's a war Chilean lie. Just as anybody that knows their history knows Francis Bellamy was not a national socialist, and the Bellamy salute predated the German Workers' Party, let alone Hitler's rise to power by three decades. Interesting. Yes, it's also the truth. Just like 
Um, well, I heard it was called the Roman salute, and it's, it predis, uh, predates more than three decades. It's thousands of years old. Right. Bellamy borrowed it it's from the, the Romans, Bellamy and I've pointed out before. The but don't respond, to, don't respond to the fact, Derek J., that you said something that's a despicable lie. Just like the 1988 or 89 shooting down of an Iranian passenger liner has nothing to do with uh, 15 a-holes from Saudi Arabia that were rich and have, highly educated and when indoctrinated talk by about that? a no super... Idea. Thanks About for the call hour. tonight. I think you might have been referring to maybe another show that you were on, maybe one of your shows. I Derek J., you host. Know. He was uh, talking Peace about what News I was now. talking about. PeaceNewsNow.com. But he knows I won't speak to him. See you tomorrow night. Are you? Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, September 15th, 2014. Silver is trading at $18.63 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,235 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $476. Antiwar.com reports, heavy fighting in the rebel capital of Donetsk put the ongoing Eastern Ukraine ceasefire in serious jeopardy, with both sides claiming the other fired first. The move comes just a day after Ukrainian Premier Arseniy Yatsenyuk talked up the state of war between his nation and Russia. The ceasefire has more or less held since it was brokered by Russia, though it came to the chagrin of NATO and led to new rounds of sanctions against Russia for interfering in the country. Ukrainian Defense Minister Valery Heliti reported NATO is so eager to see the ceasefire collapse that they've started direct shipments of weapons under a sideline deal he claims was made at the Cardiff summit two weeks ago. Hellady insisted, I have no right to disclose any specific country we reached that agreement with. Some NATO nations have denied any plans to provide lethal aid to Ukraine's military, though the alliance did publicly agree to some funding for them. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9700.